celebrate. The arrows broke into the wind column Wednesday night in Indianapolis. The cool hand of Sylvain Turgeon chilled the ice in the third. This goal gave Houston a lead they'd never relinquish. Rob Dobson iced the victory in the final period, turning back all seven shots. Hey, don't touch that dial. Hockey night in Houston is next on Prime Sports. from the summit in Houston, Texas. Prime Sports and the Houston Arrows present International Hockey League action. Tonight, the Houston Arrows host the Detroit Vipers. Very pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to the summit. I'm Adam Gordon. It's the Arrows and the Vipers. I bring in my broadcast partner, Mike Greenlay, and the Arrows coming off their first win of the year, 3-1 against the Indianapolis Ice on Wednesday. That's a big win for the boys. And it certainly is, and you look at a guy like Rob Dobson, who led them that whole game. I think the Arrows needed one of their goalies to come up with an unbelievable performance, and Dobson did that. And the hockey team will have a boost offensively. They have acquired Paul DiPietro on loan from the Toronto Maple Leafs. If you want to think of this guy, he's a lot like a Mario Cittaroni and an Al Conroy put together, except this guy will give you about 20 more goals. He certainly will. He's going to cause a lot of problems for the defense on any opposition he plays against, and he's definitely a positive addition to an already strong Arrows lineup. For you Arrow fans, in regards to the Vipers, I have some good news and I have some bad news. Bad news is... Peter Bondra, Michael Pavanka will play tonight. Good news is for the Washington Capitals. Well, I think we should send the Washington Capitals a gift because they took these guys and finally signed them. And I and I think everyone, including the Arrows, are going to be happy that they're out of this league and finally back where they belong in the NHL. However, I would caution that you have to keep an eye on the Vipers. It seems like teams, when they lose key guys, always pick up their play. And that takes us to the Oshman's game plan. It's brought to you by Oshman Super Sports USA. Well, first of all, the Arrows have to reduce defensive breakdowns. A team like Detroit's going to capture capitalize on certain situations and if you give them too many chances they'll do it to you all night long second they have the arrows have to strike first the arrows need to score the first goal vipers lost seven nothing in their last game they have to jump on them really early and keep it running next parlay the penalties the arrows have been taking way too many penalties averaging 41 per game this is not the kind of hockey Terry Skelski wants the team to play. For the Arrows, they're one of the most penalized teams in the IHL, Mike, and that is something they've got to work on. When we return, we'll throw it to Kevin in the clubhouse right after this. Houston Arrows Hockey on Prime Sports is being brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Fly Southwest, the low fare airline. By your participating Texas Chrysler Plymouth Dodge and Jeep and Eagle dealers. By Columbia HCA Healthcare Corporation, a new commitment to healthcare together. By Texaco Clean System 3 Gasolines, add more life to your car, take it to the star. And by the Gatorade Company, if you're living life to the fullest, you're gonna get thirsty. That's why you need Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Life's a sport, drink it up. Welcome to the summit as we get set for the Arrows and the Detroit Vipers. And uh, the second meeting of the year, the Arrows one and six. The Vipers are six and one. They had started off to a six and oh start and then lost seven nothing. And they're looking to continue their winning ways. We talked about earlier the loss of Peter Bondra, Michael Pavanka. That is a huge loss. Those guys really owning the offensive part of this hockey club. But I'll tell you, this is a very talented hockey club without it. 
Take a look at tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Southwest Airlines for Detroit. On right wing, Dave Smith. Left wing, Lonnie Loach. At center, Guy LaRose. Defensemen are Brad Shaw and Yuri Krivihishaw. And in goal, it is Daniel Bertillon. It was supposed to be Rick Knickel, and for those of you that were listening on KPRC, we were talking about Rick Knickel, but they have changed to Daniel Bertillon. Three and one on the year. The starting lineups for the Houston Arrows, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Scott O'Neill, Al Conroy, Mark Freer with Miles O'Connor, Steve Jakes, and in goal, Rob Dobson. And we're underway from Houston. Puck controlled by the Arrows. It's Jakes, roll the right side, Conroy. Conroy circling back into his own zone. A quick pass to Miles O'Connor. O'Connor left wing, fired it into the Detroit zone. After it, Conroy shot and he fanned on Busting down the right side, and a stick save made by Bertrand. Didn't really have to do much with it. It was fanned on partially to the far side. Lock picked up. Houston in there digging. Freer roll on Arneal behind the cage. Arneal trying to come out in front. It hit skates, and it came to center. And a break for Loach. Loach is in. Loach right in on goal. And a shot blocked. Rebound. Score! Right off the hop. Guy LaRose off the rebound. And the Vipers need only 41 seconds to score, and they lead 1-0. Well, you know what, Adam? talked originally about how this lineup doesn't really need those guys sure any any lineup could use those two guys Pavanka and Bondra but I tell you what guys like LaRose and guys like Loach you got to watch Loach gets in just tips it Dobson gives the rebound not one he usually would want to give up but on those kind of situations when a guy's one handing it like that you don't know whether it's coming low or coming high and Dobson not expecting to have uh, LaRose in there that quick, and he does get in there quick and making a, a good play right off the bat for Detroit. And as I bring in my other broadcast partner, Alan Hemberger from KTRK TV, that's not to start the Arrows. Hey, Adam, that's a heck of a way to start a hockey game, but, uh, you know, the Arrows need some offense. They were in the offensive zone pressing, and they just got caught. Their defenseman just got caught up ice. Absolutely. Long, long hockey. Lots of time remaining. Just underway. Puck brought in by Detroit to the far side. After it, it's Junker turning left wing. Junker trying to tip it back to David Emma, waiting at the hash marks. Let's the shot go. Dobson stopped it. Then he dropped it in front, and Gord Donnelly is there. Donnelly rode one near side. Terjean banked it to the line, not out. Held in by David Williams. Now another shot hooked wide of the net by Cherney. And off the center ice, it slipped Chenko with Paul DiPietro. Couldn't find the handle, and the Vipers turn it around. 29 to go first period one nothing the Vipers lead it back in their own end Houston has it long lead pass Laniel hits the line drills a shot Bertillon the blocker save over skating it was Malgunas McCroy tried to tip it free Yo's got it spin it down the left side for Malgunas he lost the handle Vipers and Druzak steers it out the center ice for John Craighead intercepted by Jakes four checked on the play by Daryl Williams and he finally got it out the center and the arrows nearly had a two on one but the Vipers are back and Druzak chipped one out at center, and McCrory is there. 1 0 Detroit. Yo hooks a pass into the Detroit zone, and Druzak trying to knock it down. He's in a battle with Malgunas, picked up by McCrory for Houston, trying to find one out in front for Yo. And then Druzak's got it, chipped it along the boards, and out at center, Craighead. He rumps the center, dumps the puck into the arrow zone. After it, Jakes. He's met up by Darrell Williams, trying to move it along the boards. In there battling is Joe Dave for Detroit. He's got McCrory on his case, spins the pass down low. Williams trying to get away from Jakes. They bang it back to the line, held in. A shot right on, and a stick save made by Dobson, and Arneal is able to clear it down the ice. So, Alan, I'll tell you, some good pressure by the Vipers. Absolutely. Uh, these, uh, these guys got quite a uniform to look at, too, for these uh, fans here, but they've come out hustling. You know, hockey, uh, a lot of hockey is a lot of hard work, and the Detroit is, uh, team has certainly come out here and out-hustled the Arrows, at least for the first couple of minutes. Well, you know, Adam, we talked about missing the, the missing those two players, Bondra and Pavanka. You just run down their list. You have Lonnie Loach, Joe Day, Yuri Krivohisha. All those guys have five, six, seven points this year so their offense is coming from other other avenues so these guys are are going to be strong regardless of the fact that they lost uh, those two players face off to the left side of Dobson Freer Arneal and Conroy and I'll tell you what with putting Al Conroy on that line I think Terry Ruskowski has finally got an enigma solved that I think has been plaguing him since day one last year of finding someone that would be a, a good asset to that line and by having Conroy up there I think he's found him Puck controlled by Detroit near side. Hooked it out at center. Valamont, who comes in on a 25-game tryout. He was released earlier in the week by Cincinnati. And back here in Houston. Puck controlled near side by the Vipers. The shot right on. And the blocker save made by Dobson. It's chipped by Conroy to the line. Not out. Another long shot high and wide of the cage. Bounds to the near corner. 
De La Rose worked it back to the line for Smith, back behind the net. La Rose waiting, waiting, playing peekaboo behind the cage, trying to come out in front. O'Connor came out. The shot stopped by Thompson. As from point blank range, it was ripped by Gabe Smith. Another shot on. And Thompson makes the save, and he holds on. We've played three and a half minutes of the first period. The Vipers lead this hockey game 1-0. We've got more IHL action when we return. one nothing Vipers lead it. Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlee and Alan Hemberg. You know, we were talking about the addition of Al Conroy to the Mark First Scott Arneal line, and we asked Terry Ruskowski what that means. Well, I sure hope I do. Uh, of course, you can't tell unless they go on the ice and start playing. Uh, I feel that with their contribution and their attributes to the game of hockey, they're a great combination, even with Paul in the lineup with uh, Turgeon and Slavchenko. I think that's another line that could be a very, very testy line and could produce a lot of goals. So we're hoping that both lines can score. And if the other line could do what they did the last two games, um, we'll have a pretty good, uh, well-balanced uh, three lines. Thank you, Terry. That is, you're looking at three balanced lines. It's just going to be a matter of time so they can get some play. I mean, remember, Sylvain Turgeon is only in his fifth game, and Di Pietro in his first after a 14-hour flight. As the shot ripped in there and Dobson the glove save, and it's turned around by Gord Donnelly. In behind the net, Donnelly, who had his best game as a Houston era Wednesday, worked the puck ahead to center. Di Pietro slams it into the Detroit zone out of the net. Bertillon reversed it, but Yo chipped it free. Yo in a shoulder battle with Andrew Jack, and it's turned around by the Vipers. Darrell Williams chipped it to the line, not out. Held in by Jake's right point. It came out in front from McCrory, but intercepted by Detroit's defense and cleared. Andrew Jack worked it out the neutral ice, and Craighead off to the races. Right side dumped the puck into the Houston zone. Uh, four and a half gone in the first, and Detroit on top, one to nothing, and the Arrows turn it around. McCrory to center. Center, shoots it into Detroit territory. Bertillon slowed it. It went behind the cage. Malgunas, good job checking. And here is McCroy. Back to the line. Jakes, his shot is blocked. It teeters the line. And it's controlled by Andrew Jack and gently rolled to center. Arrows go back. Laniel. He'll turn in his own end and head up ice. Laniel worked one right side. Jakes. And he'll dump the puck into the Detroit zone. Back to get it. Brad Shaw. For check Conroy. Puck came out in front. Vipers have it. It's cleared to center by a Loach. Long lead pass jammed away by Laniel and wrapped the center. Arneal trying to advance it in a battle with Brad Shaw, and Freer will take over. Steve Jakes at neutral ice, trying to fire the puck ahead to Conroy. It goes into the Detroit zone. Bertillon misplayed it. Arneal's got it left side. Arneal behind the net for Freer. Waiting, couldn't get it to Conroy. He was bumped in behind the net by Yuri Krivishaw. It is O'Connor to Freer. Center! chance for the Houston Arrows. Boy, that was a great play. They're finally getting some offense in their own zone. They just seem to be out of sync so far in this game. Nearly a chance in front. Viper Stewart cleared near side. Yosef Cherney dropping the center. Three on two across the line. Trying to move around Jim Pack. Cannot do it. Puck jammed down low. And it's Miles O'Connor. O'Connor behind the net. A pass to Pack. Go right back to O'Connor as the Arrows try to break it out of their end. Quick pass, Conroy. Give it to Freer at neutral ice. Dump the puck into the Detroit zone as the Arrows make some changes. 1-0, the Vipers lead it. On a goal by Guy LaRose. Cherney across the line, busting down the right side. The shot, and Dobson makes the save. Junker left wing, trying to spin it down. Cherney shoulder to shoulder with Donnelly. Puck in front, jammed away by Laniel. Cherney trying to work it down. Dobson out of the cage to play it. And a nice play as it comes right over to Sylvain Turgeon. Craig Andrewsack. For Detroit takes over, shoots it into the arrow zone, but the brunt of that shot will go all the way around the boards back down into the Detroit zone with a 1-0 Viper lead. Now Di Pietro, 7-1, hit the stick in front, and the Vipers will try to clear they can't. Turgeon in the slot, Turgeon to Slipchenko, ready to go! The shot by the net, and then Turgeon knocked down, and a penalty coming up to the Detroit Vipers. Delayed call, here's Di Pietro shooting! Oh! Turn it around, and we take a timeout. We sort the penalties out when we return. Vipers lead 1 0. Vipers take an early lead 1 0, but the Arrows get a chance to come back here as I think it was a good, oh, sorry, a good shot there by Di Pietro showing that he's already ready to score some goals. And then a penalty on Turgeon is Turgeon doing a lot of work down low and finally has to be hauled down. This this line is just buzzing around there, Adam. Slipchenko's probably having a heyday playing with these two guys. 
Get our first look at the Arrow power play. Freer Arneal, Townsend with Conroy and Laniel. Arrows win the draw. Conroy, left point, lightning, shooting! Blocked in front by Smith. It's controlled. Arneal spins it back to Laniel, but he turned it over in front. And the Vipers, another break at center. LaRose across the line, but Conroy was back to play it. And he rolled it over to the left side, and it came to center. And Ian Herbers takes over for Detroit. Back to Dave Smith in his own zone. And a long shot rolled by Dobson. And the Arrows will play at 135 remaining in the Houston Arrow power play. It is a Conroy who shoots it in as the Vipers fourth in the IHL in penalty killing, 89.6%. And that is one of the best. It was interesting. The Arrows, who finished first in the IHL, nibbed out these same Detroit Vipers last year. Puck in the corner, left of Bertillon, grinded out Freer, worked it back to the line, Laniel, waiting, waiting, quickly slams it back down for Mark Freer behind the cage, couldn't control the pass, it was slipped along the boards, and it was Ian Herbers in a battle with Freer, Herbers banked it near side, Conroy trying to move it, Townsend's wrapped up, I'll tell you, the penalty killers are very aggressive by Detroit, and they're wreaking a little havoc for the Arrows to set up Mike Greenlay. Well, I tell you what, that's exactly what the Arrows were doing to Indianapolis last game, they were forcing and forcing, this causes guys to lose the puck, and, and make passes they don't want to make. Now we finally got Di Pietro uh, back out there and hopefully Tergeron him too to, to, to get something on the board in this last 30 seconds of the power play. Di Pietro worked at near side Tergeron. Tergeron cutting in, lost his stick, he was chopped down, play going on. O'Connor winding, shooting right on it, Bertiome will hold on. So Daniel Bertiome Coming out very strong in this first Boy, period. things are happening on the ice when these uh, new guys get on the ice. So you can actually see they've got NHL experience. Perhaps they come in here thinking, hey, I'm going to show these guys in the IHL something. Gives them a little juice, but uh, Di Pietro's really got some juice here in the first period. So does Tergeron. You know, uh, you look at Bert Jum, we thought we were going to see Knickel, and actually I'm both surprised and not surprised that uh, Bert Jum is starting. First of all, he was in that when they lost 7-0 last week. But then on the other hand, you look, he leads the league in goals against average with only two per game. So both a surprise and then maybe a little bit not. Shot wide of the net, Di Pietro scoops it away from the board. Centered in front, Slipchenko. I don't think he anticipated the pass. Puck knocked down, Slipchenko to Turgeon. He's bumped, but Di Pietro's got it. Di Pietro back to the line, O'Connor. Wrist shot in front, deflected. It's loose in the slot, and Dave Williams will clear to center. Rolled it right side. Joe Day across the line, busting right in on goal. That shot, oh, Thompson! Backing the pads with a great save, and the arrows turn it around. Slipchenko across the line, dropped it back, the drive, and a stick saved by Bertillon, and it's cleared down the ice. Great action in the period. Boy, we've had some problems covering the points tonight. What do you think, Mike? We haven't, uh, it's been uncovered a couple of times here tonight. Well, the, we talked about defensive breakdowns, and that's one thing the uh, Arrows are going to have to watch is, is players slipping in behind them and going for things like the breakaway. I mean, Dobson has to, has to have come up big a few times, and here he has to stack the pads as Joe Day just feeds the puck across, and Dobson gets both pads on that one. Those aren't the kind of saves you want to have to make this early in the game, but Dobson's doing it again. He had to make these saves in Indy. He certainly did, and more. And uh, that you don't want to, you don't want to put your goalie in that situation every game. But I'm sure Dobson will stand up to the pressure, no matter what it is. Face off left side of Bertillon. Arrow's power play is done. Teams are at five aside. Shargarovsky, the former Arrow near side, Cherney, bumped by Yo. Puck picked up by McCrory. McCrory centered, but Cherney was there to tip it free and clear it out the center. He got by Jim Pack, and it's a two on one. Cherney centered the shot. Oh, what a stop! I think he poke checked it away. And we're going to get a whistle. And do we have a penalty? I, or were they offsides? Oh, the net. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't see. From this far away, it's hard to see the net off, but that's a break for the arrows. I'll tell you, it's a big break for the arrows. Once again, uh, whatever happened to Jim Pack, he was trying to do a little poke check action there, Mike, but the guy skated right around him. Well, I think what's happening is the arrows are trying to trying to play the puck and not the body. If he'd have played the body, it'd have been a simple two-on-two. Two. He tries to play the puck, and it's poked by him. And uh, next thing you know, a, another great save by Dobson. That's, I tell you what, coming from a goaltender, that's a very difficult save to make. You know Dobson, he's got to come across the net right now, but then the player's coming back the other way. He's going against the grain, but Dobson reads it, gets his stick out there. Good poke check. Is there grain on the ice? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> against the grain, against his grain. Puck shot into the... Zone as the Viper is already out shooting the arrows 9-4. They lead it one to nothing as they scored about 30 seconds at the start of the game. A lot of breakaway. 
Clock is down into the corner. Malgunas watched by Day. Shargaronsky tipped it free. Vipers clear to the line and not out. Held in by Yo. Yo barely in. Centered the shot. And it was hooked wide, but we're going to get a penalty. And I think, speaking of hooking, it's going to be a hooking call on the Detroit Vipers, and John Craighead will go to the box. Well, I'll tell you what, Craighead is a, the type of player, that, as soon as he steps on the ice, he's going full, full tilt the whole time, and uh, he gets a little caught, caught behind the play there, and he tries to hook his way back into it, but the good job by the referee catching that one. I'll tell you, Terry Ruskowski can't be too happy tonight. That's got to be the second or the third two-on-one that the Vipers have had against the Arrows. That's a bad sign. We're, all, you know, halfway through the first period here. we got to do something defensively. Well, defensively, is uh, it's, it's, it's the amount of shots that the Arrows are giving up lately the, and also the quality of chances. Uh, those... Those could have been sure goals there. Dobson coming up with two or three big saves already. It could, it could be three, four, nothing Absolutely so far. Right. So I think the Arrows have to concentrate on scoring goals, but you always should take care of your own end first because that's where it all starts from. I like to see him use the body a little bit here, Adam. Yeah, that's a good call. Uh, the Arrows looking to play physical. And you know, the funny thing is, is the puck is cleared but not out. They've got the ability to play physical. They showed it in the indie game. Puck behind the net. It is Townsend trying to loop it down. It came to the near corner. Townsend and again shouldered into the boards by Ian Herbers. They grind it out. Skate for skate. Townsend bumped it back to Arneal. Setting up on the power play to Lanyell. The shot. Who hooked just wide of the net. Conroy's got it back right side for Freer behind the cage. Mark Freer looking for the pass. Banked it back to the line. Lanyell over to Conroy. Conroy slips it down for Arneal. The pass goes behind the net. And it is Townsend. Got chopped down behind the cage, but stays with it. Townsend, base of the left circle. The pass to the line misses Conroy. It goes back down the ice, and Mike Greenlee, I'll tell you, this penalty killing is outstanding by Detroit. Well, they just love to force, like I said, and they're getting their, they're getting their sticks into the passing lanes, not allowing the arrows to set up. Arneal cutting behind the net, centered out in front, but it was jammed away by Lonnie Loach, and back down the ice it'll go. Out of the net, Thompson. 1-0 Detroit, 8.37 to go in the first, 55 seconds remaining in the Craighead minor. Arrows on the power play. Sylvain Turgeon across the line, skipped by one check, but it was jabbed away to the line, not out. Held in by Conroy, getting set at a right point. Conroy waiting, waiting, looks for the pass down low, tipped away, but turgeon has got it. Sylvain Turgeon along the boards, lost the handle. Herbers cleared and out to center ice. That was Loach that cleared it, and it goes into the arrow zone. You know what the Vipers are doing? They're sending one man to forecheck. The arrows have to have the extra guy in there because they have to use that extra man. That's, that's why they have the extra man on the power play. I see the call, excuse me, Mike, and face off back into the Houston zone. Oh, and uh, like I said, right now the arrows are, are just, they're, they're actually playing one-on-one -on -one hockey in the corner. They have to have outman the the, uh, the Vipers in, in, any, in any area along the boards, and they're losing the battle on the boards. And then when the arrows do try and feed it through the middle, the Vipers have their sticks in the passing lanes, and they're knocking the puck down and just shooting it down the ice. The Arrows have to control the puck and maybe move it around just a little bit right now, and they're trying to make too many big plays right off the bat. I think the defensemen definitely got to play their positions a little bit more and let the uh, the wings in the center worry about the offense right now until we get their house in order. We've seen a lot of, in the start of the season, a lot of breakaways, and Mike, you tabbed it pretty good in the last game, talking about the defense staggering, and a lot of teams see that in the video, that they can beat the Arrows getting behind them. They get that pass. Big collision as Slipchenko was just unloaded on along the boards. And the Vipers clear it. Joe Day right back down the ice. Power play is down to a second. And now we're going to see a penalty on the Houston Arrows. And it's and it's a bad one, too. I mean, uh, Slipchenko was hit along the boards by Brad Shaw. And I don't know if I don't know if I don't think any of the cameras caught it, but as Slipchenko was skating back up the ice, he chopped Brad Shaw right in the back of the legs. And you know there's no padding on the back of the a hockey player's legs. So I mean he'll he'll sit down for two minutes. That's that's a strictly disciplined penalty it was a sure it was a hard hit and I don't even know if it was a legal hit but you got to pick your spots to get the player back there's there's plenty of time in the game to get a player back whether it's clean or however you want to do it but Slivchenko does this one right in front of the referee and they're gonna catch that they're looking for that a big hit they're looking for the next guy to skate up and chop the next guy it's it, it's gonna it's a prime example you know it's one of the great reasons to come to the summit to watch arrows hockey because a lot of the best part of hockey happens away from the puck isn't that right Mike that is exactly right and then Adam and I talked about that about how a lot of a lot of talent is is often uh, is seen away from the play it's seen what guys do away from the play whether it's uh, for checking whether it's getting open face off top of the circle to the right side of Rob Dobson we'll get a look 
at the Viper power play as it's shot down by Houston. And I'll tell you, you look at the Arrows power play, not very effective. Arrows have been on the power play twice. They've only had one shot, and that was when the Turgeon and Di Pietro were out there, the other new guys. Yeah, and that shows a lot of credit for the Viper penalty killing. They really force well. That's that's more of an indication of how well Detroit's penalty killing is. Loach behind the net, centered one, but it came out in front, picked away by Conroy, and skated out to center. Three on two, the arrows hurried. They had a shorthanded goal in Indy. Across the line, Conroy weaving across, centered! It hit skates. Freer behind the net, pounded into the board. Sharkarotsky, but he still centered the pass, and it was chipped away by Detroit, and they'll move it up ice. Oleg Sharkarotsky. Played for the Arrows last year and then was traded along with Len Hackthorn for Al Conroy. And a deal that I know Pete Deneen and Terry Ruskowski licking their chops about that deal. Puck controlled by Brad Shaw. Minute five remaining in the Detroit power play. Puck goes all the way down the ice. It was going to be icing on Detroit, but Dobson forced to play it because Dave Smith came barreling in. David Emma centered one. Dobson rejected that. And away the arrows come. Jake's long lead pass for Scott Arneal. Busting in across the line, short-handed. Arneal center. Oh, missing Di Pietro. Jake's returned it back down behind the net. 6.25 to go in the first. Vipers 1-0, 40 seconds left in the slip. Chenko minor. Emma trying to bring it in. He was hooked away by Arneal. And Laniel shoots it down the ice. So in return, the arrow showing some outstanding penalty killing of their own. Yeah, I see. I still think they got to get a little more physical here. There's no question about it. Uh, they obviously can't keep up uh, with the skates with these guys. They got to slow them down somehow. And that is one thing Terry Ruskowski would love is that kind of physical game. But as you've talked about, Mike, a little more discipline, though. Well, there, there's there's hitting and then there's discipline hitting. Two different things. Yeah, quick shot rejected by Dobson. Dave Williams jammed it down behind the net. David Emma hooked it along the boards for Greg and Druzak. Sends it back, top of the slot. Cherney centered, the shot whistled just wide of the net as the penalty over to Slimchenko. Puck was centered, McCrory banked it, and the arrows turn it around. McCrory to center with Laniel. Across the line with Slimchenko. It is Laniel pulling up, centered, and Yo was tackled in front. That'll be first and 10 for the arrows, but a delayed penalty. Slimchenko behind the net, set up. It came to the line. Here's Freer, right in. The shot is blocked. Arrows still on the delayed penalty. Finally, Andrew Jack plays it, and the Arrows are going to go on the power play when we return. 5-16 to go in the first. one nothing Detroit. We will be right back. And the Arrows showing some good offense as Joe Day just drags down Mike Yo, and that, that's what the Arrows need to do. They need to drive to that net because it forces guys like Joe Day to drag them down, and of course, it gives a penalty to them and a power play for the Arrows. Third look at the power play tonight for Houston. Laniel left point, getting set. Laniel worked at right point for O'Connor, but he lost the handle, and the Rose will clear it out at center ice. Just underway with a power play. Ten seconds gone in that. Five minutes gone to play. Or excuse me, five minutes to play in the first. one nothing Detroit. Oh, but no. the Arrows are going to get nailed for an interference minor. And uh, that will do it for the power play. Guess what goes before interference on that one? Yeah, I, I know. Don't tell me. It's obstruction. And you know what? If you look at the if you look at the rules, the way they're set out right now, that's a prime another prime example of a uh, of an obstruction interference. Take another timeout. one nothing Vipers will be back. Vipers lead 1-0, and the arrow power play over will go 4-on-4 four four for 144, Mike. And like you talked about, it's a little discipline. This is a classic case of obstruction. Well, Mark Freer just steps. See, if Mark Freer is already in front of the Viper player, that's fine. But he makes a concerted effort to get in front of him, and that's an obstruction interference. They're calling him. And I think from a fan standpoint, it's going to open up the game. It's going to be a lot. It's not going to be a lot better if fans are familiar with the Devils, uh, you know, uh, play of hockey. Then they understand what this stuff is all about. Exactly. And, and the thing is, is right now I think it's just a matter of time for the players to get used to it because it's come to a grinding halt. A shot right on and a great glove save made by Dobson. Wow! Right in front from Steve Junker. Four on four for another minute twenty-four, and then a the power play for Detroit. Arneal circling back in his own zone, hooked it out to neutral, but Junker is there. Steve Junker chipped it back into his own zone for Oleg Shagaradsky. 4.25 to go in the first. Vipers lead it one to nothing, busting down the left side. Junker ripped the shot. It was deflected by O'Connor, and it slices over to the near side. Laniel for Al Conroy across the line, trying to move in. Conroy right in on goal, and he couldn't get the final shot away. He had hooked down 
Bertillon, but then Bertillon noticed Conroy coming by, and Al couldn't finish off the shot. Tell you what, Al turns on a dime like nobody, and he really did a good job there. Balamont with a wrist shot, and a blocker say made. Arneal right in, yeah! Scott Arneal! It's an even straight goal, but this hockey game is tied at one. Well, I'll tell you what, good pressure by everybody. I like the way Balamont came in there and took a shot on goal, and I also like the way Arneal followed up on the play. You know, it just goes to show you, Mike, uh, what happens when uh, you put the puck on the net. You don't wait for the great pass. The great, you put the puck on the net, see what happens. There's the rebound, comes right out in front, right on the stick. Yeah, it comes right on the stick, and uh, Bertum, I'm sure, would have liked to have that one back. But Arneal, you know, Arneal, he doesn't take a very hard shot, but boy, it, it's accurate. And he just found the little hole on the ice between the legs of Bertum, and all of a sudden, it's a tie hockey game. Black is back in the Detroit zone. 3.48 to go in the first hockey game. Nodded at one. Half a minute. In half a minute, the Arrows will be down a man for about 13 seconds. Across the line, the Vipers come. Loach rolled it to the near side. The shot right on. And Thompson makes the save. Big goal for the Arrows. Gets them even at one. Puck controlled by Turgeon. Balamont trying to clear it. Back to play it is Di Pietro, and he'll slam it behind the cage. Here comes Jake's long lead pass, missing Turgeon. It'll go down the ice. In five seconds, Earls will be short-handed. Out of that, Bertillon rolled it right side. Stewart couldn't move it out of the zone, but Williams will. Ahead, bad pass for Loach. Across the line, they come on the power play for another 10. Loach, winding, shooting, it hits skates behind. Emma is crushed by Di Pietro. On. Ford Donnelly was in there as well. And the puck goes back to center. And into the Detroit zone at Druzak. Penalty over for the Viper or for the Arrows. Teams at five aside. 1-1 one, one game. Donnelly. Right wing boards for Yo. Lost the handle. Puck cleared at neutral. And it's picked up by Craig and across the line. Tipped away. And now it is now Budas. Two on two with Yo. Here comes Yo. Barreling down the left side at Drujak, lowered the boom, took him down, and then Malgunas takes his man to the board. So, all of a sudden, Alan Hemberger, you asked for some physical play. How's that? Yeah, that'll uh, get the guys going. Yo, center. Oh, another chance. Almost in front, and Williams will play it along the far boards. Jammed it down. McCrory, he's lowered into the boards. Puck clear to the line, not out. Craig Head finally gets it out to center. 2.15 to go in the first game. Tied at one, and oh, Craig Head was chopped down by McCrory. And and that will cost him two minutes. You know, that was that was pretty flagrant. I mean, uh, McCrory, a very, very physical when he gets in there. He's a very intense guy, but he's got to watch how high he swings that stick when he goes for the or goes for the hook. You know, Mike, as a player, don't you think that uh, uh, once you get hit, uh, it, it really gets you going, gets it, the juices it going does, a little it bit? It does. It gets you mad. It's time for our watch and win contest brought to you by your local Chrysler Plymouth Dodge and Jeep and Eagle dealers. Call right now at 777 5772. That's 777 5772. And identify the player from the October 13th game against the Los Angeles Ice Dogs. We'll give you the winner at the end of the first intermission. And I'm going to give you a clue. It's a guy that played for the Arrows last year but hasn't seen any action this year. That's all, that's all I'm going to say because we're really not supposed to give clues. 777 5772. If you can identify who it is, let me know. Block played by Detroit. And it's controlled by the Vipers and shot to center ice. Vipers trying to control. Out at neutral, they've got it. It's picked up by the Vipers' Brad Shaw, and it's lobbed along as the Vipers turn it around and shoot it into the arrow zone. Knocked down by Thompson. Loach trying to play it. LaRose is in there. He's shouldered by Laniel. Here come the Vipers. Puck control LaRose. Back to the line as Detroit on their third power play of the night. Shaw, top of the slot, had it tipped away, and Freer cleared. Not out, though. Held in by the Vipers. Puck centered the shot. Oh! oh throw just wide. Dobson made a last ditch effort it worked as the shot was deflected away wow big play there puck to the line it's held in by detroit slams it down loach behind la rose it came to the line the drive dobson stick saving a beauty dave smith in the corner wrapped up by o'connor 55 in the power play la rose wheelie dealing had it jammed away by freer and down the ice it'll go once again dobson showing how he can get across the back of that crease and he moved across very well. 
Rob Dobson just taking over where he left off in the Indianapolis game. Puck in the arrow end. It's chipped near side. Di Pietro cleared it. It's in center for Arneal. He'll bust it out three on three across the line. Arneal waiting, waiting. Gives to Donnelly nice. right here. Oh. He let a shot go just wide. He had Bertillon coming out. But he hooked it wide, and Druzak across the line, looking for Tierney or Day. He got it down, though, and Arneal will clear it back down the ice. 20 seconds to go, and the Arrows nearly got a short-handed goal. Boy, Donnelly just missed the net. Just hooked it to the near side, and away the Vipers come. Four seconds left in the power play, 10 in the period. Penalty over, Dobson clear, but not out. Second effort is cleared, again not out. Good work, though, and now the Arrows come to center. Across the line, it's Yo. Yo trying to drop it back. Yo cuts it in front of his pass as the buzzer sounds, ending this first period. It's a 1-1 hockey game. We've played 20 minutes of action, and Alan Hamburger and myself will recap that first period when we return. Summit, everybody. It's a 1 1 hockey game. Adam Gordon along with Alan Hemberger from KTRK Television. And kind of asked you the question before we went on here is this, is this as much fun as doing TV news? Oh, are you kidding? You got to be kidding me, Adam. You, get, you guys get paid for this? <laughs> this is absolutely fantastic. You know, before I became a newscaster, I wanted to be what you are. So I'm just honored to be here sitting <laughs> next to you. Hold on, folks. I got a $20 bill here somewhere for that one. I appreciate it. Let's talk about, I'll tell you, that first period was excellent. Up and down, up and down. But that means that the goaltenders had to be on their toes and both played well. Especially uh, Dobson at our end. I, the shots aren't posted here in the summit yet, I don't believe, but I think the arrows were very, uh, were uh, outshot quite a bit by the Vipers. Uh, two on ones that we talked about before, but Dobson had oh. to be there strong. He only let out a couple of rebounds that gave, you know, the, the Vipers that uh, extra chance, but uh, he has come up big, and he's the reason why the arrows are tied right now. And it seemed like the first couple of shots, uh, Dobson looked a little shaky, though. That first one went in, and then he bobbled a couple, but after that, he played really well, and he's taking over where he left off against Indy. There's no question about it. Uh, you know, the, you can make up for a lot of ills with a strong, hot goaltender, and that's what the Arrows have had tonight. So the Arrows and the Vipers are tied at one, and I, I, the thing, I guess, now is Terry Ruskowski has to be a little concerned about the power play, but I don't think it's the Arrows' power play. They're moving the puck okay. It's the Vipers really forcing. They really are. The Vipers, you can see, and, and I don't know this. I, you know, I'm not a student of, of this league, but it seems like the Vipers have been together a little bit more. They, they they, they, they're larger, they look bigger than the Arrows, and, uh, you know, the Arrows aren't quite sure, I didn't think, in the first period whether they wanted to play a fast skating game or a hard hitting game. So we're going to find out how this is going to play out in the second period. I, I do want to ask you one question that I asked you during the radio sure. break when we broke away from the sure. simulcast, and that's that's Paul DiPietro again. I mean, yeah. a lot like uh, Mario Cittaroni, and you can already see, this guy flew 14 hours, you can already see the effects with him out there. You know, those the folks out there who have watched the NHL for years have known the guy like Yvonne Cornway, and they know what I'm <laughs> talking about the guy who flies down the wing this guy reminds me a lot of that yeah and don't forget this is a guy in 1993 helped lead the Montreal Canadiens to a Stanley Cup I mean this guy can light it up he's gonna put a lot of goals in for the Houston Arrows and I'll tell you you can't get any better than this though no this is great uh, absolutely fantastic the Canadians though as bad as they're going this year <laughs> may want the guy back no 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 doubt about that all right it's a 1-1 game and we will have more from the summit right after this Tied at one back in the summit. Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlay. And oh, what a fast period that was. You know, I, I don't know if that's the kind of skating period the Arrows want. Well, I tell you what, I looked up and there's five minutes left. I mean, it, the power plays always do that, though. And you're right. I don't know if the Arrows want it have that kind of game. I mean, Detroit would love it. They love that fast, open kind of skating. But the Arrows are a hard-hitting kind of team. They should be defensive. And I think if they keep up like this, it's going to be tougher on the Arrows to win. For Rob Dobson, uh, we talked about with Alan Emberger. It seemed like first couple of shots he struggled with, including the first one that went in. Talk about a goaltender when the first minute it's kind of tough, and then all of a sudden you start lighting it up the way he has. Well, I'll tell you what, from personal experience, it's always tough right off the bat because you don't really have that sweat going yet. You're not really into the game. And the first couple shots are always a whoops here. You know, you don't you don't want to make a mistake with them. And so you always want to, you, from a from a perspective of a goalie, you always want your team to give you some nice long, let you have some nice long ones so you can get into the game, get that sweat and really get that challenge on. And then after that, he did fine after that though. 
Taking a look at the highlights from that first period, uh, each team got a goal and Detroit got on the board first. Well, Detroit, he gets, flips by on the, de on the defensive side and uh, off to the races. The thing about this is Miles O'Connor's got to watch his man because the next man's the one that scores the goal. Miles O'Connor's looking at the puck and not at the man. The man's the one that's LaRose scores the goal. But Scott Arneal, you talk about him, he doesn't have a very hard shot, but it's very accurate. But first of all, going back and watching Dobson again on the goal. Dobson does a good job. The rebound gets away from him, and LaRose just chips it by him. It, it, it's always tough on those ones, but, you know, and then you have someone like Arneal. Arneal's an opportunist. He's just floating into the right. Valamon makes a good shot. Look at Arneal. He's waiting for the puck to drop, and there it comes right for him, and he just slides one between the legs. Actually, they went five hole twice. They beat the defenseman five hole <laughs> and the goaltender. Well, so a good cool. job by, first of all, Conroy getting in there and causing trouble, and then by Arneal getting in there and tucking that one nice and low. So the game tied at one, and uh, for the Arrows, I think uh, at this point, we're still seeing some signs of defensive breakdowns. We saw a lot of outnumbered rushes that got to curtail that. They do have to watch that. I saw some very positive signs offensively. Take care of your own end, and I tell you what, it's off to the races offensively once you do that. 1-1 one, one game. We'll have more right after this. As the teams returning to the ice, getting set for, I'm sure it'll be no different. The second period was as exciting as the first, I have a feeling. Uh, let's take a look at tonight's first period stats brought to you by your local Texas Chrysler Plymouth dealers. 15 to 7, the Vipers outshoot the Arrows. Both teams 0 for 3 on the power play. Seven uh, faceoffs, one for the Arrows to six for the Vipers. And three penalties for six minutes for both hockey clubs, and those are your first period statistics. And uh, uh, again, guys, uh, the question is, is a, a fast skating period. Uh, I like the comment that Alan Hemberger made. I mean, I think Terry Ruskowski would like to see a little more bumping, but then the retrospect is, is how do you catch these guys? Well, I think, first of all, if you notice that first period, when do you think the Arrows played their best hockey? I'll answer that for you. It was five on five, as they have for quite a while. They've got to, it's fine when you're on the power play, but they've got to watch their, their penalties. Uh, it, it just it just cuts their momentum right off, and it doesn't allow them. It, you, the only way you get into a game and you hit and you do things like that is when you're charged and you're, you have momentum. You can't do that when you're in the box all the time. It's time to reveal who won our watch and win, and our featured player tonight was... Kevin Grant and congratulations to Doug Walker of Houston Kevin Grant who played in the 89 Turner Cup Finals and the arrows picked him up uh, on uh, November 7th and his favorite TV show come on <laughs> Melrose played I figured it would have been hockey night in Canada that's not on channel 13 is it no <laughs> <laughs> no 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 it's on the other guy's yeah, station right. <laughs> all right also uh, Doug Walker has won a trip for two to Las Vegas to see the Arrows play the Las Vegas Thunder, and they will stay at the Imperial Palace Hotel. Remember to stop by our local Chrysler Plymouth Dodge and Jeep and Eagle dealers tomorrow. See who the next featured Arrow player is, and I'm going to give you a little hint also. We're going to do one more tonight, so stay with us. This would be for tonight's game if you stop by, and if you have not done that, be sure to get to your local Chrysler Plymouth Jeep and Eagle dealer and check out who will be for our next telecast, which is Sunday, by the way. Sunday against the Atlanta Knights, so stop by and find out who our featured player is. I know who it is, but I'm not telling, so there. We're ready to go with the second period. 1-1 game just underway, and the Vipers have it in their own end. Brad Shaw behind the net, arrows into four check. It's lobbed to center and all the way down the ice. Jakes will play it, and Jakes will touch, and that is icing. And one thing I kind of noticed there was the arrows setting up in that neutral zone trap. They're trying to neutralize the team speed maybe in the early going here. Well, that would be the smartest thing they could do. Like I said in the intermission there, the best thing the arrows will do is to play their game. They start trying to play that fast skating, open, uh, open kind of game. They're going to get beat uh, defensively. You know, it's a very good point. Uh, that's what I thought I saw in the first period. It wasn't like, you know, they, they were really sure what kind of game they wanted to play. Hopefully, uh, Terry Ruskowski has set them straight here between periods, and they'll come out and play a more physical game. Face off, left side of Bertillon, off the face off, and the Vipers have it. Shaw behind the net. Rolled one to the far boards. LaRose, who has the Viper goal, cleared to center. Dave Smith hammered one into the arrow end. Picked up Loach, but got it back to the line. Shaw, the drive, and a glove save made by Dobson. And, folks, he continues to look as sharp as the edge of town coming into this second period. Well, Dobson sees this one all the way. I tell you what, it looks good, but 
This is just routine for a guy like Dobson. Look where he is, way out on the top of his crease. And you know what? You can tell when Rob Dobson's playing well because he's, he's usually not standing in that little semi-circle that's colored blue in front of him. He's usually standing about a foot on top of it. That, of course, cuts down the angle and allows him to, to challenge a lot more. The other thing is we saw the guy who was right at his doorstep again all alone. Yeah, that's a good point that he didn't give up a rebound or that guy's right there to tap it in. And that's what he did so well against Indianapolis is control his rebounds. Yeah. And if he did give one up, it was usually into the corner. Off the face off. It's controlled by Detroit. Cleared but not out. And then Terjean got it out of the zone. Back to play it, Ian Herbers. Four check by Terjean. And Terjean took it away. Terjean behind the net. It came out in front. Di Pietro fighting for it. He was spun down. And Andrzejak couldn't clear. Here's Slipchenko. Vadim Kindle on the boards. David Emma for Detroit lobbed it behind the net. And the Vipers control. Cleared near side. And they come to center. Emma, center ice pass. Intercepted by Slipchenko. Vadim in his own zone. Comes in with goals in his last three hockey games. Slipchenko right side. Across the line, right in on goal. He will shoot. Eight, eight by Bertio. Wow, unreal. Now the puck controlled Slipchenko. Di Pietro center, Terge on the shot. He couldn't get good wood. The puck was in his skate. Di Pietro working hard in the corner. Base in the left circle was cleared to the line. Not out, held in by Pack. Nice play there. Pack reversed it along the boards. It came to the near side. Donnelly pinching right side, but the puck had enough front to go back down the ice. Jim Pack trying to clear, could not. Knocked away. Williams coming right in. Shoots. And a shot going wide, but a penalty coming up to the Houston Arrows. Hey, that's a pretty good line change there for the Vipers. They waited till the puck came in, and then Williams makes that a two-on-one. He certainly did, and the problem is, is Pack tried to reverse the puck out of the zone. All of a sudden, out of his peripheral vision, he sees Williams. And Williams, all he did was cut right to the front of the net, and pa Pack had to haul him down. And uh, here you have Slivchenko on the other end just before this making some great moves and Bertiome going down very well on that one and covering the whole side of the net. Slivchenko likes to go up there. But uh, as we said before, Williams, he likes to cut for the front of the net and all Pack can do is since he was a step behind him is reach out with his stick. And of course, Williams stepped on the stick and uh, went down in a heap and Pack will sit down for two minutes. So actually, actually, that was a good penalty off of a not so good play. You know, it was funny. I was looking, as you can see, that the arrow's leading the IHL in penalty minutes, 41 a game. But it seemed like it was a one-on-one, -on -one, and then all of a sudden, boom, Williams jumps off the bench in the air. You know, that's a legal line change. That's where you use your line changes effectively. It certainly was a good line change. And the thing is, Pack got, got caught all alone in the zone, and he, all he could do was backhand the puck out. Controlled by Detroit off the draw. Power play 0 for 3 for Detroit. Shaw shooting. Oh, it changed to speed on Dobson and direction. And he was able to get a pad on it. Shagorodsky, top of the slot, shoots. Stick saved by Dobson. Puck picked up by Looch. Right side, the drive. And, uh, Dobson will make the save and he will hold on. And a little gathering in front. And nothing uh, comes of that. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you who that gathering's around. And it's, it's Dave Smith. He actually had the first goal for uh, the Vipers last time the Vipers were in this building. And uh, boy, does he cause a lot of trouble in front of that arrow net. Good job by Dobson picking up the puck through the crowd because there are a couple shots that came through the crowd. And uh, sometimes as a goaltender, you have to look around players. And that's why Dave Smith's standing in front of that net. He's standing in front of the net to cause a screen, to cause trouble. That way the uh, defenseman has to push him around and get him out from in front. And uh, there's there's Laniel trying to get Dave Smith out of there, but Dobson stands his ground. And you know what? Dave, Dave Smith's like a crow there, just just waiting for a piece of bread to fall out before he pounces on it. Good job by Dobson again, freezing that one. Off the face off, Shagorodsky shot block, batted back to Oleg Shagorodsky. Shagorodsky drifting back, hands it over to Loach. Loach winding, faking the shot. Sends it back down. LaRose to the line. Shagorodsky a shot. Stuck aside by Freer. It came to the corner. And Loach plays it for Detroit. Lonnie Loach drifting back to a left point. Hands it down to Shaw. Sends it back to Shagorodsky. Redirects for Loach. Lonnie Loach cuts in. Shoots. Stops and stopped it. Rebound. Cleared not out. Here's O'Connor. He will clear it out to center ice. And a good kill here for the Arrows. Absolutely great. I mean, there's the Vipers are taking the shot. Looking for the rebound. And Dobson's coming up big. Yeah, he's not giving up any rebounds at all. And the Arrows take the puck and shoot it right back down the ice. You know, the, uh, the Vipers really like to set up that defenseman right at the point. And a lot of teams will set both defensemen up. They're just setting that one up, and they've got, it means they've got an extra guy down low. 
Shagorodsky carries it across the line for Detroit. Base of the left circle. Drifts it back to the line. Here's a chance. Dave Williams sends it right side. Vipers move it. Here's the chance. Cherney slipped it down. Vipers waiting patiently. They've got half a minute on the power play. Dave Williams had it go off his skates. Jammed away. And Arneal may have a break if he can get there. Arneal's in on goal. Arneal right in. Oh, great save by Bertio as Arneal busted in down the right side shorthanded. And a marvelous save made by Bertio. Arneal moving down there at pretty good speed. Di Pietro the other way, trying to move it out in front. And the Vipers clear. So the best way to kill off a penalty, Alan Hamburger, is maybe score one of your own. Boy, I'm telling you, we've seen some hard work once again by Tergion and Di Pietro making some opportunities, making some things happen. Joe Day brings it back behind the net. And Druzak, as Dobson tried to swipe it away. And Druzak center. It went through skates as the penalty is over. Teams at five aside. Pack cleared it out at center. Vipers control. David Emma and lost the puck. Turgeon. Oh, the left pad save made by Bertio as Turgeon boomed one from the left circle. Puck near side. McCrory belted along the boards, but it's taken back by Detroit and cleared to center. There come the Vipers across the line. Cherney dropped it back, missed his pass. The shot by Andrew Jack and a stick save made by Thompson. McCrory. Got it to the line and out at center. Vipers dump it in. They make a line change, and Laniel will play. 15-25 to go in the second. And hockey game is tied at one. Jakes looped it into the Detroit zone. Stewart goes back to play. Stewart along the boards, cleared it down. Icing indicated. Valamont has to hustle back. He will touch, and icing is the call. We've played five minutes of action in the second period. Game tied at one. We'll be right back. Hockey game tied at one. Alan Emberger, I got to tell you, I was looking through my closet. I had a few white polyester suits. Do you have any idea where I could use it? Oh, I think a, a disco night would be good, Adam. Hey, what do you, you think? Go. There you go. We're going to have a disco night right here at the summit. Talk November to me. November the 4th. It's a Saturday night. You can bring your white suit. KC and the Sunshine Band yes. will be here. Yes. Yeah, make a little love, do a little dance, get down tonight. All right, Arrow's getting down on a 1 1 game. Adam Gordon along with Alan Hemberger, Mike Greenlay, and an outstanding hockey game. It just doesn't get better than this, folks. Hope you're enjoying this one. O'Connor behind his net. Fired one, Arneal missed the pass. It'll go through the Detroit defense and back into their own end. 14.50 to play in the second. Game time at one. Ian Herbers for the Vipers behind the net. Slams a pass to Gila Rose. Out to center for Loach. Lonnie Loach, who played a lot of last year with the San Diego Gulls. And then part of the season with Detroit. Puck was centered. It hit skates, and Arneal will turn it around. And then he did print it on the boards. By La Rose, they scramble for the corner. Arneal a good battle as a couple of 11s go at it in that corner. LaRose wears 11 as well as Scott Arneal. Al Conroy, speaking of ex-Vipers, across the line, cutting down the left side. Conroy meandering through the defense, hooked it down for Arneal. Scott Arneal looking out in front. He sent it right to a Viper, and it's clear to neutralize. Greg Andrewzak across the line. He's got Williams cutting to the net, but the reason that was is because he was ahead of the playoff. Sides was six gone in the second, and the game tied at one. Oh, a lot of good back and forth action in this second period. One thing that hasn't plagued this second period, as you can see, are penalties. And the Arrows are doing a very good job without all that. And you talk about the penalties and all that, but one positive thing, Alan, is the Arrow penalty killing. Boy, they've been very strong on penalty killing. They've been killed at 12 the last 13 power plays they've had against them. So, you know, they're doing something Well, right. actually, you can take that 13 of 14 now after that last one. So that's a good point. And the Arrows back at even strength. And the game even at one. I told you they'd get good at it if they took enough penalties. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Terry says I'd rather work on it in practice than in games. Buck is in the arrow zone. Joe Day unloaded oh, it on by McCrory. He belted him onto the boards. Picked up by Craig Head. Craig Head into the corner looking for Darrell Williams behind the cage. He's in a battle with Donnelly trying to shake off the check. Can't do it. And away the arrows come. They got it out at center. The Vipers shoot it back in. Delayed offside? No, they said it never came out, so the Vipers can stay into four check. Now, Malgunas romping to center. Three on two is pass, though. Intercepted, and here comes Detroit. Dave Williams across the line, trying to center one for Daryl Williams. It comes in behind the net. Malgunas in a battle with Joe Day, scooped away by Craighead. 
It is controlled by John Craig, head to the line. It's Shaw cutting in, lost an edge, and down he went. He crashed and burned to the circle, and the arrows bring it to center. Yo, looking for Amanda Pastu, dropped it from McCrory, hits the line. McCrory right in, pulls up, center. The shot hit the side of the net, behind the cage for Yo. Yo waiting, waiting, churns with a shot blocked. Malgunas knocked down, play going on. Now Shargaronsky trying to play it. Bodies are flying all over the place, folks. Game time at 1, 12.48 to go. Detroit turns the puck around. Shargaronsky dumped the puck in, but that is offsides with 12.45 to go. Second period hockey game, tied at 1. We will be right back. Welcome back, 1-1 Hockey game. Adam Gordon, Mike Greenlay, Alan Hemberger. Hey, great action tonight. It certainly is, and I think uh, in order to keep the success going, the uh, Arrows are gonna have to come over the line as a group like they were against Indianapolis. They've certainly tightened it up defensively here in the second period. Absolutely, and they've created a lot of chances of their own as we've got a penalty coming up to the Vipers' delayed call, and we'll get another look at the Arrow power play as Joseph Tierney, I think, just might be the man going to the boxes. Our referee tonight, Dean Warren, says, Tierney, have a seat. And that would be for hooking. He hauled down an arrow player. And, and you know what? I, I really like this line out there right now. Slavchenko, uh, Slavchenko, DiPietro, and uh, Kurjan. But on the ice right there was gets Tierney, sorry, falling down. It looked like Mark Greer. And uh, they'll sit two minutes. And uh, you, you're right. I, I, I didn't mind penalties as long as they were for as long as they were for the arrows and hopefully they can do something and change this momentum if they can take the lead maybe they'll keep the lead like they did against indianapolis tonight they're over three with only one shot but maybe maybe something more will come out of it anemic <laughs> they need a transfusion puck controlled by di pietro in his own zone and here comes lanyal to center Pushed one out to Turgeon as he hammered it into the Detroit zone. Jammed away to the line, Eldon O'Connor. Right side, Di Pietro to the line, O'Connor. The shot deflected. Slipchenko couldn't redirect it on goal, though. Stewart for Detroit will clear it down the ice, and the long shot is gloved by Dobson. Miles O'Connor. He will bring it from left to right. Pass Slivchenko through center. Slivy across the line. Slivy cutting in. Right in on goal. The shot is stopped. Rebound. And it went wide. It's Terjean. Give it over to Slipchenko. Vadim waiting at the left side with a minute 14 on the power play. Slipchenko back to the line for Laniel. Laniel to Slipchenko. Gets it back. O'Connor tees it up. Makes the shot. Goes to Slipchenko. One time shot. Block puck came out in front. Oh! Looks out in front but couldn't redirect it. He had it go too far. Terjean down. Slipchenko shoots. And he hooked the pass. And it went wide, and it'll carry all the way back out to center. A near chance for the arrow. Boy, I'm telling you, the more they work on the power play, the more opportunities they get, Mike. Well, Laniel tried to sneak in back door there. Slivchenko just missed him with a pass. So a good opportunity. At least they're working something. At least they're trying things. O'Connor, a pass to center. Arneal had it jammed away. And the Vipers turn at neutral ice. Joe Day back in his own zone. It goes all the way back, and then Brad Shaw looped it down the ice. Steve Junker, first one there. Junker centered, and it went wide. Arrows on the power play, but the Vipers have had the chances to shot right on. Arrows having all kinds of trouble trying to bring it out of their end. Puck goes behind the net. Dobson slowed for Jakes with under 11 minutes to go in the second period. Game is tied at one. Here comes Houston. Jakes pass right side for Freer. It goes down into the corner. Stewart and Freer go hard into the corner, but Arneal is there. To the right side, Jakes. Look for the shot. Chipped it down, Arneal. Penalty over. Teams at five aside. And the puck is cleared. And another breakaway. Yosef Tierney's in alone. That well must be really deep because they just keep going to it. Now it is free the other way. And it's set it out oh. in front. The shot. Scott! Yeah! Scott O'Neill! And the Arrows have a 2 1 lead. It's his second goal tonight. I tell you what, Adam, it's a it's a it's a scene you see so often. A great save at one end and a goal all the way back and down at the other one. Arneal taking this one on his backhand and sliding it under a diving virtue, but not before. And makes an unbelievable toe save on Journey. Journey, the puck gets batted out of the zone, pulls it to his backhand, and Dobson doesn't go for it, just gets his toe on it. The puck comes.
it's all the way back down the other end. How many times do you see it when a goaltender makes a big save and right back a team comes? It always happens. Uh, the, the other players are watching their great play at the other end of the ice, and it develops uh, down to the other end. It gives the Arrows a chance to score, and they put it home. And you talked about Al Conroy coming up big for uh, for this line while he just swooped around behind the net. Little backhand pass to Arneal. Arneal all over that one. The second one of the night. He made no mistake with that one, tucking it under Bertum. A great goal. And it's a 2-1 hockey game. Arrows lead it behind the net. Donnelly had it chipped away. LaRose had it poked free, and Jimmy Pack takes over. Chipped it out the center for Yo. Couldn't find the handle. Vipers regroup at center. Ian Herbers drifting back into his own yeah, zone. Yo trying to turn the puck around. Low scooped it away. Lost control, and Yo will clear to center. Here come the arrows, two on two. McCrory across the line with Mal Gunas. Cuts across the line, turns center. No, blocked away as Herbers shouldered him off the puck. Now Mal Gunas trying to shake off a check. He spun it back down low. Andrew Jack was there. It came to the line, not out. Jim Pack, long shot. Wow, changed direction as it was deflected. The line of the net. Puck came near side. Mal Gunas seems to have sprung a leak. One of his cables has become dislodged. Play will go on, though. Yo couldn't control, and the Vipers romp to center. Across the line, a nice oh. pass for Lowe. Shoots. Dobson with a stick save. Wow, this guy is standing on his pancreas tonight. Nobody can get by him, and the Dobson keeps it 2-1. Unbelievable. Somebody call me a doctor. Puck comes in, the oh. shot, and a bucker save made by Bertio. Oh, man. Excellent action from the summit. And there you go again. Another big save by Dobson, and a scoring opportunity all the way down at the other end is Tershon rips it around the corner, tries to tuck it in near side. I tell you what, you don't want Lonnie Loach getting in on you all alone, but Dobson stands his ground there, going down on only one knee. Great action. Take time out. Arrows two, Vipers one. We catch a breath and catch this time out. Vipers bring it ahead. It's across the line and back to play at Miles O'Connor. He'll scoop it over to Silve Turgeon to Paul DiPietro. Bring it across the Viper blue line. Sends it right in. Slivchenko couldn't get the shot away. DiPietro, oh, I think Turgeon thought he was going to shoot it. And it's picked up by the Vipers. That's just one of those cases where the guys got to play together a little bit. Vipers across the line, Joe Day, but it's turned around by Miles O'Connor. And the Arrows get it out at center ice. Stewart ripped it into the arrow zone. Dobson knocked it down. Puck checked up and started kind of meandering out in front of the net. The arrow is trying to move it along. Puck fire boards. It came to the line. Not out. Vipers held it in. After it, O'Connor to the near side. Chipped it off the glass. Not out. Shargarotsky held it in. Puck picked up and the puck was hit with a high stick with 8.03 to go in the second period. A 2-1 hockey game. You know, on that play there where DiPietro passed it to Turgeon, the reason why Turgeon was turning away is because he was taking care of his defensive, his defensive uh, job. Basically, he cut around and he was going to come back but he got a pass, and instead, it, it turned the playoff. But good defensive coverage by Turgeon. And you talk about the defense. The arrows, Alan Hemberger, have, have to watch it because they've been outnumbered rushes several That's times. That's right. Two on ones, three on twos. Four times tonight so far, Detroit has come down on them that way. Three breakaways, one of them a goal. Puck control by the arrows at their own blue line. Jakes cleared to the center. No, it was held in by the Vipers. I thought maybe Arneal was going to be able to get it out of there. So Arneal's got a pair of tallies, and Jakes took a shoulder. Down he went. Junker flipped it back behind the net. Centered for Tierney, but Freer will pick it away, and he will go to center. Mike Freer busting down center ice across the line with Conroy. Here's Freer looking down the left side. Freer cutting in on goal. The centering pass knocked away. Freer behind the net. Skate to skate to the line. A shot by Valamont deflected right on, and it was stopped. Now it's centered. Jakes the shot upstairs, and he just fits the net. A sprawled out Bertium got a little lucky as Jakes went for the penthouse, but the door was locked and he went through the roof a little too high. Back of the Vipers. The drive. And a fucker save made by Dobson. 2 1 game, 7 3 to go in the second. Here come Houston. Arneal at center, rolled it into the Detroit zone, out of the net. Bertium reversed it far side, and Druzak. He'll skate a long lead pass. Loach a bit behind him. He was corralled by Malgunas, and Donnelly takes over. Donnelly. For Yo, trying to chip it ahead, but Ian Herber has turned it around. Pass center ice. Dave Smith across the line for Loach, blocked by McCrory. McCrory kicked it free, and now it's Yo. Lead pass, Malgunas across center, and he'll shoot it into the Detroit zone, and a blocker saved by Bertiome, and it's a souvenir. 
Well, I'll tell you, the uh, the Arrows have really picked up the pace, and Mike, it's really working for them here in the second period. They're creating their own opportunities. They, they certainly are, and uh, I mean, you get guys that are forcing, you get guys that are that are that are uh, forechecking down low and working hard. I think the only thing you have to concern yourself about is the uh, is the defensive possibilities. But here you have Steve Jakes ripping one, and it just floats over the top of the oh. net. There's a 3D shot for you, but. Uh, Good job. They're, they're creating their opportunities, as you said, and that, that just uh, shows that the arrows, especially the lines that, that Terry Ruskowski has made up for tonight, are working well together already, and and, the, and some of these guys haven't ever played with each other before. Face off left of Bertillon. Di Pietro won the draw. Shot wide of the net. And LaRose is there. Di Pietro on his case. Puck came to the line. Pack, shot, block. Never made it to Bertillon, and the Vipers come to center. Three on two. LaRose across, sends it back. Low shoots hit Donnelly right in the entrails. Puck came out in front and Gord Donnelly will corral. Give it over to Paul Di Pietro. Skated out at center ice. Di Pietro through the neutral zone. Hooked it to Slipchenko, knocked away, and it's picked up by Donnelly and redirected into the Viper zone. I'll tell you, we've seen now 14 minutes of the second period plus the first 20, and it just amazes me that the void that was left by Cittaroni was filled in a big way with Paul Di Pietro. Well, certainly we, we compared him to him, and he's going to offer even more goals than uh, than Cittaroni did. So obviously a good addition to this line. Mario known for his work ethic and Di Pietro has shown he can wear the blue color as well as the white one. Puck controlled by Houston, chipped to center. Conroy gives it over to Arneal, skating through the neutral zone. Arneal across the line. Arneal looking for three, sends it on. Nice, beautiful. Oh, oh. Freer. Wow, how does that not go in? Oh man, Freer went upstairs and somehow Bertillon got a piece of it. Conroy centered, Freer again. By Bertio. Here's Freer again trying to center it, and the Vipers come away. Mark Freer. Oh, man. Don't Freer the Reaper, buddy. He almost got two on that one ship, but couldn't get it by Daniel Bertio. Pocket center. It is Mark Freer. He'll try it again. Freer dropped it. Conroy. Conroy waiting. It was centered behind skates. Freer again, base of the right circle, sized up by Shargarovsky. They're skate to skate in the corner to the left of Bertillon. 2-1 game, Arneal, cutting in, centered, hit skate, and the Vipers turn it around. Oleg Shargarovsky in his own end, meandering up and out of the zone, a pass, center ice for a galloping Yosef Tierney across the line. Tierney shoots, and it hit the side of the net. Here, Tierney again, base of the circle, near side, watched by Jakes, reversed it down into the corner for Steve Junker. Junker back to the line for Herbers. The shot right on and drops in the stick save. And Jakes will scoop the neutral ice. 4.15 to go in the second period. And the arrows lead 2-1. Yo, a pass. Malgunas goes into the Viper zone, but they will clear it. And Houston's got to get back. The arrows were changing D on that, and that nearly cost him on an outnumbered rush. But McCrory was back this time. And Druzak a shot wide. Rebound picked up by Greg and Druzak. Circles back to the line. Ian Herbers lets a shot go and hits Gates. Puck came down low. It was centered by David Emma looking for Junker. Junker near side who has a Turner Cup ring with the Denver Grizzlies last year. And the puck is stripped away. And here comes now Gunas down the right side trying to get by Ian Herbers. Long shot and a left pad save made by Bertillon. Herbers belted by Yo. Crowd likes that. Puck came out in front and Junker turns it around. Junker gets one out at center ice. David Emma slammed it into the arrow zone. It'll go down behind the net and Dobson slows with three and a half to go in the second period. 2-1 hockey game as the arrows trying to get it out of there. Cannot. Shagaronsky held left point. Cuts it down the rows. Back to the line. Oleg Shagaronsky. Shagaronsky looking down for Junker who's had a long shift here. Shagaronsky the drive. Stop by Dobson. Rebound. And the arrows trying to clear. It's Valamont in the corner. Spins it behind the net for Jakes. He'll blast it off the boards and down the ice it'll go. It will be icing with three minutes to go and a 2-1 game. It is controlled by Shaw and play whistle down. Let's take time out. It's the arrows to the Vipers one. Don't go away. Arrows leading the Detroit Vipers 2-1 with just under three minutes to play. Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlay, Alan Hemberger from KTRK-TV. Glad to have you with us. And it is time for our watch and win contest. I promised we'd have another. It's brought to you by your local Chrysler Plymouth Dodge and Jeep and Eagle dealers. Call right now at 777-5772 and identify this week's player for this hockey game. You're not getting a clue, folks. We'll give you the winner at the end of the first or at the end of the second intermission. And remember. You had to check it out at your local Chrysler Plymouth Jeep and, Jeep and Eagle dealer. 777-5772. Uh, first person to call wins. And here comes Di Pietro. Two on one with Lukchenko. Center the shot. He scores! Bad needs Lukchenko from Paul Di Pietro. And the Arrows lead it 3-1. A 
terrific goal. I tell you what, Adam, I like this line already, and I think everyone else does. Slivchenko, excellent in his last few games. He's got four consecutive games where he's scored a point. But Di Pietro does a lot of the work, and then he just chops it over to Slivchenko, who puts it right in off the post. What a great goal. And you know why? Look at the speed they have. The only way Bradshaw could have caught up with Slivchenko there, because he was in full gallop down the wing. And I tell you what, you look at this line, and you look at the other line with Greer, Arneal, and Al Conroy, I think you got two very solid lines. Maybe they can play that kind of fast skating style with everyone else. And he scored in five consecutive games. You can't ask for much more than that. No, and I think he's found a new center iceman in Paul DiPietro. What a play. Oh, man. Black is clear to center. And the Vipers have it. Williams trying to chip it ahead. Craig Head lofted it back to the arrow zone. First one back to play. It is Paul DiPietro. Who said a 14-hour flight is too much? Cleared one out at center, and Stewart is taking over for Detroit, trying to lob it ahead. Donnelly worked it ahead for Sylvie Turgeon. Belted along the board by Michael Stewart. Battle along the near side. DiPietro trying to pry one away. Slivchenko, now if that's not obstruction, folks, please tell me what is. I mean, he was getting hooked on the play, but hey, it goes on. I don't have a problem if they call it a lot or don't roll. Let's just keep it consistent. That's the problem. We saw a lot of penalties in the second period against Indianapolis. We haven't seen that. It's just the one obstruction call, maybe two. Puck control Freer. Get it back to the line. Jim Pack. Stutter step. Centered out in front. Arneal immediately got a piece of it. Arneal's got it back, though. He can find the side. 54 to go in the second. Arneal drifting back left side. Rolled it down for a skating O'Connor. Lost an edge down. He went. And I think we got a penalty coming up here on the on the Detroit Vipers, maybe that's why he went down. Well, I, I don't know. I think he was all alone in the corner there. I, it's kind of, Everyone's kind of standing around. It might have been, even been a high stick, but no, it is going to be a call. And it's cross-checking, I believe. So the, the, the arrows, another opportunity on the power play in perfect timing, only a minute 48 left in the period. You know, Mike and Adam, uh, we're looking at this hockey game for the last five minutes. The Vipers have been watching the arrows play hockey. Just like in the first five minutes of the game, the, the arrows watch the Vipers play. That's right, and guys like Arneal and Freer, and there's Freer in front getting cross-checked, a very good call. But I tell you what, you're right. The arrows are taking the play to the Vipers, causing them just to watch the puck. And that's the problem is the Vipers are watching the puck and not doing anything about it. The arrows are milling around, buzzing around, I like to say, and uh, they're causing a lot of problems for the Vipers, and they, they're up 3-1, to one, so this could make it 4-1 to one going into the second intermission, which would be perfect for the arrows. Not controlled by Miles O'Connor, trying to spin it down along the boards, Arneal hooked it down Freer. He's belted by Andrew Jack, but got it to Scott Arneal. You know, you look at this, the Viper's not nearly as aggressive on the penalty killing right now. Arneal sends it back. O'Connor lets a shot go right on. Bertio didn't see the rebound. And lucky for him that Freer saw it but poked it wide. Freer, base of the right circle, getting set. Freer steers it over to Arneal. Pinching was Laniel. Laniel, though, couldn't get it down deep enough. And O'Connor regroups at center. 1.15 to go in the second period. Houston 3, Detroit 1. And the arrows back in their own zone. It is Mark Laniel. He'll skate from left to right. Laniel, a pass for Arneal. Chipped it over to the left side for Al Conroy. It goes down along the boards, and Arneal's got it at the hash marks. Right side, belt it down for Freer. He reversed it to Conroy. Arrows moving the puck well on the power play. Conroy sends it back, left point, waiting. Here's O'Connor. Looks for the pass to Laniel, right wing. And he'll give it to Arneal. Plenty of time, a minute on the power play. O'Connor scooped it down. Conroy, oh, uh, fan on a centering pass, but the Vipers couldn't clear. Held in by Laniel. Worked it right side, Arneal. Looking for Freer, but goes back to the line. Laniel tees it up, line, shoots right up. Bertium save, rebound! And the Vipers have got it. Smith cleared to center. Here come the Vipers. Loach across the line. Feathers a pass in front. And the arrow, Scott Arneal. What a defensive play by the heavy veteran, Scott Arneal. Great play to break that up. Now Arneal, a long pass. Pass intercepted by Shaw, and the Vipers turn it around. Shargaronsky, left side, a shot blocked. Laniel tipped it away, and here comes Di Pietro to center. Paul Di Pietro trying to make the move. Right side, cutting in on goal! He was ridden out by Loach and pushed, but he stays with it. Centered, Balamont the shot, and he fanned on it. And it'll go down as the buzzer sounds ending. A wild second period, but I have one name. Paul Di Pietro is the man in for the Arrows tonight. I tell you what, what a great, what a great acquisition here. Di Pietro is showing that what flight. He 
just came off an airplane. He practically jumped right off, parachuted in here, and he's really done a lot of damage to the Vipers tonight. Looks like so he's far. juiced the whole team. He has. He's really picked up the uh, the charge for the whole team, and guys are playing off him and off guys like Dobson. A good sign to see. All right, 3-1. The Arrows lead it, and when we return, Mike and I recap the period. We'll be right back. Inside the summit, Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlee. Arrows leading this hockey game by a score of three to one. And boy, what a change, what a difference a change makes when you bring in some guys, some fresh blood. Uh, Sylvain Turgeon, kind of a, a little shot in the arm, but Paul DiPietro has sort of like been in inoculation. Well, I tell you what, I like the way these guys play together. You have Arneal, Freer, and Conroy. They're playing together like they've played together for, for years. And then you have DiPietro coming in on that other line. I tell you what, the Slavchenko and Turgeon, they all complement each other so well. And I really give credit to player, a director of player personnel, Pete Deneen. A lot of coaches, a lot of, sorry, a lot of GMs or players, personnel, or, or coaches would have just thrown a bunch of players in and panicked after two or three games. But I tell you what, he bided his time, he was patient, and he brought a couple players in that are really helped give a good shot in the arm to this offense. And you know the funny thing is, and we've talked about this, I think since the start of the, the slump, if you will, you know, the Arrows went 0-6 and, and then picked up the win Wednesday against Indianapolis. Throughout the entire 0-6 run, not one single guy was pointing fingers saying, well, this guy's not doing his job that guy's not doing that job they stuck together as a team and, and I think that's going to bode very well throughout this season it certainly is I mean that you're not they didn't may let's say they just didn't make any enemies among the team and now they've got a positive addition to the team a couple positive additions because you also have Carl Bellamon who played here last year he's he's going to help on defense as well so I mean you got guys that have played well together and they're going to continue to play well together and they're going to get along better and, and the team that gets along plays a well, lot plays a lot better together a lot of highlights to talk about in that period we'll rumble right through them the arrow scoring two goals and take her mike i mean you're gonna be a busy man here well I, I tell you what first of all like we talked about you get a big save at one end you're gonna get a goal at the other and dobson gets his toe on that one what a great save and you know what at the end of this play this is and then sorry you're gonna take another look at this one and it's a it's such a good save we should take two looks at absolutely it. dobson it just follows that play so well, and then as it happens, it turns it turns around, and it comes all the way back down the other end. Arneal gets a great pass from Conroy, and up underneath, and what a play by Arneal, his second of the night. Yeah, and that one came on a delayed penalty, and, and it shows, like, you know, some teams just wait, and they, they give up the whistle, but Scott Arneal, smart, heady player, he gets the, the goal, but I'll tell you what, the Euros come back, and a guy that has been on fire, but even Slivchenko continues to be on fire. Well, I think, what is this, his fifth game in a row now? But... What a here we're seeing Mark Freer getting frustrated by Bertum and wow Freer has had a couple great opportunities I think he gets another one right after this if we get it but Freer is get, has been a little bit frustrated lately but what a great as I mentioned these guys are playing excellent together passing the puck around together and Bertum he's the best goaltender in the league right now statistic, statistically speaking and then there, there's one of the big reasons why and then you have Di Pietro what a great acquisition backhand pass to Slavchenko this is Slavchenko's fifth point in a five games so he's really picked up the pace after not scoring anything in his first three but Di Pietro makes it happen with speed and just feeds Slavchenko and I'm sure Slavchenko is going to enjoy playing with Terzhan and uh, and also Di, P Di Pietro. Yeah and the thing is about Vadim Slavchenko is I think he was feeling the pressure not scoring in his first three and he has to realize that hey if you don't perform you're on your way to wheeling. No I think the only thing he's on his way to wheeling to is wheeling down the right side for more points. Yeah <laughs> wheeling his wheelbarrow up for some more money maybe <laughs> but he's played so well in his last few games that and I tell you what this line's going to do some damage it really is because they it it borders on it just bases their play on speed. All right. 3-1, the Arrows lead it, and we'll look at the statistics when we return. Three-one hockey game, Arrows leading the Detroit Vipers, and let's take a look at tonight's second period stats brought to you by your local Texas Jeep and Eagle dealers. And shots on goal are now 25 to 19 through two periods. However, Houston did outshoot Detroit 12-10 in that second period. Both teams are 0 for 4 on the power play. Both teams had just one power play in that second period. 17 face-offs won by the Vipers, 14 for the Arrows, five penalties for 10 minutes for the Detroit Vipers, four for eight minutes for the Houston Arrows, and the Arrows leading this hockey game by a score of three to one. Up next, third period action. The Arrows up 3-1, and Mike and Allen will return when we come back. 
Back inside the summit, Adam Gordon along with Mike Greenlay, Alan Emberger, 3-1. The Arrows leading the Detroit Vipers, and it's time to reveal who our featured Arrow player is in the watch and win contest. It's Al Conroy playing in his 10th professional season, signed by the Arrows in 95. He was part of that deal that came over from the Detroit Vipers in exchange for Oleg Shargaronsky and Len Hackborn. Hobbies are including golf and fishing, and he's making his off-season home in Summers, Montana. In fact, he's just about done building that thing, and uh, his wife will, I'm sure, be joining him here shortly. And our winner who correctly identified Al Conroy is Tammy Dillard from Galveston, Texas. She's won a trip for two to Las Vegas to see the Arrows play the Thunder, and she will stay at the lovely Imperial Palace Hotel. Remember to stop by your local Chrysler Plymouth Dodge at Jeep and Eagle dealers tomorrow to see who the next featured Arrows player is. And Alan Hemberger, do you think maybe I can convince you to go to Vegas? <laughs> Just bring I'm sure you can convince me if you can send me to a hockey game and keep me out of the casinos. How about that? No, Al? you're not one that likes to roll the dice a little bit. Oh, once in a while. That's why I'm here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you rolled the dice with us. You didn't know it'd be this bad, huh? Well, I'm having a great time. Invite me back anytime. This is absolutely fantastic. You know, talking about that second period, you can really see the difference. It looked like two different teams, Mike, between the uh, the arrows in the first period and the arrows in the second period. Something got them charged up there. They got their legs. They certainly seemed like a more confident hockey team. It's funny you mention that because you know what the difference was? Did you notice how much five-on-five -five action they had that period? Yeah, a lot of five-on-five, five, but one thing that's usually man against, well, myth is, is golf. I don't know if you're much of a golfer, but the IHL and the All-Star break uh, gives fans a chance to play a little golf. Boy, uh, we invite everybody, of course, to be part of the big International Hockey League All-Star weekend that's going to happen here in Houston. Friday, January the 12th, the Arrows are going to be hosting an All-Star charity golf tournament that's going to benefit the Houston Arrow Charities. You can play with members of the 1980, the famous 1980 U.S. Olympic gold medal hockey team. 1974-75 Houston Arrows championship team and of course the 96 IHL All-Star team. If you'd like more information, there's the number on your screen. The Houston Arrows, 621-2842. All right, are you gonna play? Hey, I'm telling you what, I, I remember some of those guys, uh, Mike Arruzzioni, who is the goaltender? Uh, Jim Craig. Jim Craig. Craig, there you go. And uh, th this will put a little twinge in your heart. Where did he get drafted? By the Atlanta Flames. <laughs> There's a, there's a blast from the past. There, there's a blast from the past. There's a hockey player in Rick Dudley. Boy, did this guy come to play every night. In fact, it's funny when you compare Rick Dudley to Terry Ruskowski. I think you've got maybe the two of the most intense coaches in hockey. Well, Tell you, you what, don't see many bearded coaches, that's for sure. No, huh? And Dudley, of course, played, uh, played and coached with uh, the Buffalo Sabres. Oh. And, uh, and you can just, just saying Buffalo Sabres, anybody watched them in those years, they could tell how intense of a team that was. So. Oh, I loved watching Rick Dudley as a player, and I actually enjoyed watching him as a coach. He's done a terrific job with this Vipers organization. He's also the general manager, and he, so he, he just never fails to put together a, a great squad wherever he goes. And my hat's off to him, and my hat's off to the score, 3-1 arrows. And there's only nine seconds remaining in the arrow power play to start this period. Freer across the line with Arneal. Looped it back to the line for Miles O'Connor. Let's his shot go. It hits skates, and that will do it for the penalty. Teams at five aside. Puck down for Freer. Base the right circle for Conroy. Trying to center it. He's belted by Andrew Jack. Loach trying to chip it along the boards. It came to the line and out at center ice. Miles O'Connor held his man up. And uh, sometimes I look at plays like that and just wonder, isn't that obstruction? But I guess I've kind of a little bit to learn in trying to learn what they're going to call as obstruction and what they're not. Arneal, left side, trying to chip it down into the near corner for Freer. He's locked up by Ian Herbers. Conroy is in the corner, tied up by Loach, and play whistled down with not quite a minute gone in the third period. Arrows lead at 3-1. And, you know, you mentioned uh, you're not sure whether whether the, what, what they're going to call as far as obstruction or not. Well, I'm sure in some situations they're not quite sure yet what they want to call. I'm sure they want to let a little bit go and call the other stuff. And so, like we said, it's going to be a feeling out here period for everybody, including the referees. You know, I, I'd sure like to see uh, another goal here for the Arrows. I'm a little worried about this 3-1, uh, 2-goal lead. They say it's the worst lead in hockey. <laughs> no, you're, you're right on the nose. Uh, Two-goal leads are the worst. But the Arrows, though, that's the thing. I'd rather have a two-goal lead than a two-goal deficit. I was just about to say that. I'd trade, I'd trade a deficit any day. Paul DiPietro with Sylvain Terjean, Vadim Slivchenko. A devastating line tapped by Mike Greenlay. Could he be right? Tell you what, they've looked good tonight. Puck cleared to the line, not go. out. DiPietro held it in with a drive, and I think that might have cranked off the near post. I'm not so sure he didn't find a little iron on that blast. 
Puck to the far corner, Junker hit by Slivchenko. It came to David Emma and away the Vipers come to center. Yosef Tierney romping through the neutral zone across the line, centered, tipped away, rebound, all squirt through to the near side. And it was plummeted out of the zone by Di Pietro. Not out though, there's a shot by Tierney rising and it was cleared to the line and out at center. Wow, that just kind of squirted through in the arrows. Four checking on the Vipers in their own end. Detroit trying to turn it around, but Slipchenko intercepted. Cross ice pass picked up by Di Pietro, cutting to the slot. Centered, blocked in front, and it's turned around by Detroit, but not out. Picked away, Di Pietro, right in the goal! Score! Paul Di Pietro with the goal, and the Arrows lead 4 1. You know what, Adam? You can always tell the difference between an NHL experienced player and one that, that maybe is not. And that is the patience they show. They'll they'll make, have a situation. They won't panic, and they show lots of patience. Right here, it was a good poke check by Di Pietro. He'll get the puck from Yo, and watch the patience he has. He drops Bertume, and then hello, right into the open net. A great job by Di Pietro as he freezes Bertume, walks around him, and then all he has is nothing but net. I tell you what, what a great acquisition. Uh, he's going to pay dividends. He already has. He's, I think he's really going to light it up this year. And what a what a great player. What a great move. Well, again, the, uh, the arrows came out working hard here. And when you work hard, it's going to create situations, going to make something happen. And they were there to pounce on yeah, it. Di Pietro made it play himself. He starts with the poke check, picks up the puck, makes the pass, gets it back. Nothing but string music. The old classic give and go play. And I tell you what, it works so well. Now, Rick Knickel has come in for the Detroit Vipers. And we've go. got a fight between Jakes and John Craighead. This is the first fight with Jakes this year. Jakes giving it, trying to get in there with Craighead. He's got a left free. Jakes trying to fire back. Craighead with a big left hand, another left, and another left by Craighead. But Jakes comes back with another. So the southpaw is going at it. Then another big right hand by Craighead. Wow, Craighead going to the head of Jakes. Jakes got a couple in there, but wow, John Craighead pretty well at his way with Jakes on that one. But I'll give a lot of credit for Jakes. He hanging in there. He got a few rights and lefts in himself but uh well i think i think what happened is is uh, craig had got a hold of the jersey and he just kept spinning jakes and jakes could never get his feet and as you can never when you can't get your feet you just keep spinning around in a circle and uh, jake's not able to get his footing and, and that's one thing about hockey fights that people don't realize it's the player with the best balance that wins the fights usually not the player that's usually the toughest and right there i think craig had had more balance because he had the first grab on Jakes, and Jakes just could never get his footing. Also looks like he got about six inches and 25 pounds on him. I don't know, but. Well, Craighead is a big, strong player, but I think you match those guys up in a in another situation, the, the outcome might be a lot different. I'm not sure Jake wants to do that right now, though. No, he went off the ice and uh, went to the locker room, and I'm not sure what the uh, story is with Steve Jakes. We'll see how it started, Greener. Well, I tell you what. Uh, you have, like I said, frustrations are going to start to mount for both teams, especially the losing team. And uh, as the puck gets dumped in there, it's at the back of the play and you can't see it. But it was obviously something I, I might have stemmed from something earlier. It might have just been something as simple as a bit of a forecheck by uh, by by Craighead. And then and it evolved from that. Yeah. And, and two minutes are up on the board to John Craighead. So it probably was an instigation. You know, Craighead's the type of player that's going to start things like that because Okay, first of all, he's not he's not out here because because he can uh, score 50 goals a year. He's going to be a guy that's going to go out there and create opportunities by by hitting and by by fighting and, and things of that nature. And a, as you see, the arrows have come up to a 4-1 lead now, and they need anything. Craig Heads, well, I'm sure they hope offered him that. So Terry Raskowski getting an explanation of the penalties from our referee tonight, Dean Warren, and. I don't know what Terry's upset about, although he, you know, that's a pretty legitimate call, two-minute instigator, and then the automatic game is conduct. Jakes, as we said, has come off the ice, and I don't know if maybe one of those right or left stung him. You know, Craighead also just came off the ice, too, and he was holding his hand, and if you saw how many blows he gave to Jake's helmet, he that, probably could have broken his hand. That, that's, that's true. I mean, uh, that, that, like I said, that fight looked a lot, a lot more lopsided than it really was because as Jakes was spinning around, he did have his head down, and all, ja all Craighead was punching was plastic. And I, I don't know if that's that smart, but I mean, you know, you want to keep punching the top of the guy's head with your with your fist uh, on top of his helmet. All you're going to do is hurt your own hand. Yeah, but he gets an instigator, I think, was the call, which would be the game misconduct. That's why I think he was moved out of there. I, I'm not exactly sure, so we'll get that checked out. But we do have a new goaltender in for the 
Detroit Vipers. It is Rick Knickel. And Knickel, who really was a thorn in the side of the arrows the last time, really responsible for the win, along with, well, Peter Bondra and Michael Pavanka. Let me ask you a quick hockey question, Mike. Why do players drop their gloves when they fight? Well, it, you can sting a person's face a lot better with your knuckles. You can cut them open with your knuckles better than you can with one of those gloves because there's a lot of padding on those gloves. Hey, these guys try and hurt each other. A lot of people ask me, are those fights real? Because they think of wrestling, but hey, they're real. Trust me. <laughs> Puck back to the line. Miles O'Connor trying to lob one into the arrows on the power play. Freer, base of the right circle. Centered for Laniel. Cunning in, chipped the shot wide. Conroy then hooked down. Play goes on, though. Crowd wanted a penalty, and the Vipers came to center and cleared. Arneal is back. A minute 35 left in the Craighead minor. Uh, I didn't get the call if it was instigator, but I'm assuming that it was. Clock picked up Arneal, give it over to Laniel. Rink white pass to the right side, O'Connor, and he scoops it into the Detroit zone. Knickle out of the net. Leaves it for the Wolves, went back, and that was Freer. Freer steers it for Arneal, rolled it behind for Al Conroy. Base in the right circle for Arneal behind the net. Arneal crosses up with Freer. Arneal still with the puck. He's got two goals this evening to the line. Laniel rolled one right side for Miles O'Connor. It goes to Conroy, but it was knocked free by Stewart. Clear to the line, not out. Held in by O'Connor. Hard rim along the boards is going to be picked up, though, by Dave Williams for Detroit and shot the center. O'Connor is there. Gives to Conroy, looking for Arneal. Conroy's got it. Right side down for Freer. Drifting back into the corner for Arneal to the hash marks. He pulls up. Lost an edge. Trying to get up. And then Freer was dumped. Boy, bodies are flying. Puck comes to the line. And Laniel couldn't hold it in. Looked like leapfrog there for a second. <laughs> Hopscotch. 35 seconds left in the Craighead penalty. 16.35 to go in the third. 4-1 game. Puck picked up by Paul DiPietro. The goal and assist tonight. DiPietro across the line. Stutter step. Pulls up at the hash marks. Left side centering pass tipped away. Arrows Jim Pack tried to hold it in. And the Vipers clear. Andrew Jack in his own end with 19 remaining in the power play. Had a little trouble with it. Pack regroups at center for Houston. Jim Pack neutralized. Sends it back to his own blue line for Miles. Or make that Gord Donnelly rather. To Turgeon left side. Batted away by Joe Day, reversed along the boards, and Turgeon is there, but his pass is taken back by Loach and shot down the ice, and the penalty is over. Teams in by the side. Jim Pack behind the net with four minutes gone in the third and a 4 1 arrow lead. Slipchenko across the line with Turgeon, dropped it back, faked the shot. Turgeon shoots on oh, a right pad save made by Knickel, and we get a whistle. And what in the world do we have here? Do we have too many men? We do. We got six guys on the ice for Detroit. Well, uh, hey, they're going to try everything. They tried fighting, and they tried throwing extra guys on the ice. So we'll, we'll sort it out when we return. We're only going to take one minute timeout. We'll be right back. Back here at the summer where the Arrows are leading the Vipers 4-1. to Take a look at that last play. Too many men on the ice for Detroit. Count the players. You got six guys in front of the goalie. That's one too many. Where's your telestrator to count them up? I tell you what, I think <laughs> Dudley Dudley changed the goalie. Then he, I don't know if he got Craighead to fight, but there was a Craighead fight. Now he's got six, now he had six players on the ice. He's trying everything he can to get back into this game. Puck goes down the ice. Would you, for the life of me, explain to me why the Craighead penalty was called obstruction? They never did call it instigator. I will, for the life, if that's obstruction, holy cow. <laughs> well, he did. He obstructed his impediment, or impeded his progress with his fist. Puck controlled by O'Connor. Give it to Laniel. Shot wide of the net. It is controlled by DiPietro in the near side. Working hard, trying to move it along. And Loach was there to scoop it right back down the ice. A minute and a half remaining in the Euro power play. Too many men on the ice for Detroit. Laniel in his own end from right to left. Hooks a pass to center for DiPietro. Knocked away. And now another breakaway. Short-handed. LaRose right in. Could have gotten a piece of that as a great lunging poke check by Dobson. Stalled the rush. Turgeon across the line. Turgeon, he's pushed into the boards by Andrew Jack. And Di Pietro is there to the line. Jim Pack, roll it back for Paul Di Pietro. Centered in front for Turgeon. Pack held it in, but not as Andrew Jack, who got it out at center ice. I tell you what, as good as as good as the arrows have played tonight, the guy that's held them in there is Dobson making. He's he can't even count how many breakaways he's stopped tonight already. Oh man. Well, it's, always, it's no secret that he'll tell you. He, Troy Gamble doesn't like the shootouts. He'd rather have Dobson do it. So that's probably the reason why. I think Dobson feels like he's in a shootout right now. Pack rolled it into the Detroit zone. And Drew Jack goes back to play a harass by Arneal. And the Vipers take it and clear it to center ice. Well, I guess if you had to find one weakness in the arrow game at this point, it would be their power play. Pack in their own zone. 
Rolled it ahead for Donnelly. Arrows without a power play goal tonight. Arneal feathers one that was knocked down by Williams and cleared to center. Penalty down to five seconds. Arrows have it at neutral. Conroy across the line as the penalty now over and the teams at five aside. Freer centered one. It was chipped away and cleared. 4-1 Houston, 13 and a half to go in the third. Knickel out of the net. Leaves it for Michael Stewart. A long lead pass at center. Williams, that's Darrell Williams. Dropped it for Dave Williams. And he'll shoot it into the arrow end. Dobson out of the net to slow. Chipped it along the boards. Near side, Yosef Tierney. He's hit by Laniel. They battle along the near side. Conroy to the line, not out. Andrewjack held it at centering pass is blocked. And the arrows come to center. Yo through the neutral zone. Shoots it into the Detroit end. Out of the net again was Knickel slow, but Yo's got it. First one there. First to the right, right of the circle. And Malgunas scooped one for McCroy. Give it back. Malgunas trying to stuff it in there. And I think Knickel got a piece of that. And Kearney cleared to center. Laniel belts it back into the Detroit zone with under 13 to play in a 4-1 game. Pipers left to right, Andrew Zach winds one out left side, Darrell Williams picked away by Gord Donnelly. Donnelly along the boards, turning in his own end, and now it is Miles O'Connor. Long lead pass, Malgunas tipped it, McCrory across the line, the shot went upstairs, rebound in front. Oh, and McCrory couldn't steer it in on goal. McCrory lobs to Malgunas, he's hit by Shargaronsky. Andrew Zach picked it free, feathered it to Williams, and he'll skate it out at center. Pass picked up by DiPietro. And he sends it over to O'Connor at his own blue line. Four check by Cherney. Arrows making changes. O'Connor to the right side. Donnelly couldn't get it out of the end, but Miles O'Connor will. Skates it up out of the zone. Missed Turgeon with a pass. Vipers turn it around. LaRose across Smith. Rips the shot. Dobson the save. And the rebound bounces to O'Connor. Vipers still have it. LaRose trying to move it out in front, but DiPietro takes over. Vipers pick the puck away. It was Loach, had it jammed by Terjean, and the Vipers move LaRose, base to the right circle. He tried to get it down low, and DiPietro steered it away. 11.49 to go in the third period. Arrows with a three-goal lead at 4-1. Puck turned around by Gord Donnelly, handed over to Terjean. Silva shoots it into the Detroit end, and the Vipers go back. Shaw hit by DiPietro. It is Slivchenko wheeling, dealing behind the net, centered it out in front. Nice try indeed, and David Emma turns it around. At center, Shagorodsky, pass for Williams. Center, Shagorodsky, the shot, had his pocket picked in the arrows, clear. They've got a four on two if they hurry. Di Pietro, late in the shift, dropped it, Slitrenko, right in, and the puck hit skates. That is uh, a tough break for the arrows to get a four on two, but those three guys, Churjan, Di Pietro, and Slitrenko were a little late in the shift, and now Slitrenko getting roughed up in the corner as we've got a whistle and a timeout. 4-1 Houston. We'll have more right after this. Rick Dundley's Detroit Vipers trailing the Houston Arrows by a score of 4-1. Adam Gordon with Mike Greenlay and Alan Hemberger. And hey, are you enjoying this one? I mean, you weren't you weren't uh, you weren't so sure what you were going to see tonight, but you're seeing some great hockey. I am uh, very impressed with the Arrows' effort. Who, which team is five and one, and which team is one and five coming into this? But I'm telling you, we got 11 minutes left in the hockey game as it stands right now. You know that the Vipers coach has told his guys to go put the pedal to the metal, go all out. Let's try to cut this down to a two-goal game, and then anything can happen. 11 minutes, 11 seconds to go in this hockey game. Arrows lead 4-1, and. Greener, this is a, by far, I think, the best we've seen the Arrows this year. Well, they, they've really played well. We've talked so many times about the teams wanting to play 60 minutes, uh, do a lot of hitting down low, come into the zone as a unit. They've done all those things tonight, and they've done it consistently, and that's why they're up by three goals. This is the biggest lead I think they've had all year. And they've been working hard tonight. There's no question that you've seen that work ethic that we talked about at the beginning of the game. They're using their legs. They're working hard. They're getting the better of the chances. 4-1 Houston. Jim Pack at a left point. For Houston, give it to Mark Freer behind that, harassed by Michael Stewart. And David Emma will pick up a loose puck and shoot it to center. Back is Jimmy Pack at his own blue line, trying to belt one ahead for Freer. Knocked away, and Tierney comes to center and rolled it into the arrow end. Pack, near corner, looking for Conroy. It came to center ice. 10.45 to play. Third period, Houston 4, Detroit 1. Vipers have the puck, Stewart. Pass at center ice, knocked away. Arrows tenaciously forechecking, and they're going to be whistled dead on an offside. 10.36 to go in a 4-1 game. Terry Ruskowski 
I know he is, was really pleased after the Indianapolis game, but I think things are starting to come together for Roscoe and his troops. Well, I think I think he was very happy after the Inter Indianapolis game because of the win, but I think he's even more even, even happier now because he sees the potential for so many wins now with the way his team is is shaping up and with the way they're playing right now. I think Terry's uh, going to be a really happy man in, in the near future here if they keep playing like this. Scott McCrory wins the draw for Houston back to Miles O'Connor ripped it in and Rick Knickel makes the save McCrory near side looked uh, out in front it was knocked away by the Vipers John Craighead and it's moved back and Greg Andrewsack takes over Andrewsack across the line for the Vipers watched by Malgunas it's chipped down low Joe Day hit by Laniel Craighead is shouldered in there by McCrory. They grind it out, and the puck picked up for Day. Trying to move out in front. He set it, hit skates. In fact, that might have hit Dobson. It's hard to say. There was a big force to play. I think Dobson made the save, and the Vipers go back. Ian Herber's long pass came to center, but the arrows are there. Scooped in by McCrory with under 10 minutes to go in the third. Arrows lead 4-1. Detroit at center, Darrell Williams. Hammered it into the Houston territory. Dobson couldn't slow, and it's Guy Rose. He was hit by Laniel, and the Arrows get it to center ice. Michael Stewart missed Dave Williams with a pass. Williams has to go back, but he's got Slavchenko on his case, trying to roll it down. Di Pietro after it as he pursues Stewart in the corner, shovels him into the boards. Di Pietro going in hard, and the Vipers clear to center. Here they come, left to right, across the line. It's Day looking for Loach. He'll spin it hard along the boards. Dobson tried to escort it. It came out in front, but Ward Donnelly is there. Pass at center, misses Slavchenko. And it's back into the Detroit Viper end. 9-10 to go in the third and a 4-1 hockey game. Michael Stewart, forecheck Turgeon, given out to Dave Smith at center. Hooked by Freer, pushed it into the arrow zone, and Dobson comes out, flings it along the board. Smith knocked it down, trying to center it, but Al Conroy picked it away. He'll come to center ice for Freer, across the line. Freer pulling up, looks for Arneal, who's got two goals. Arneal circles back, though, to Donnelly. One-time shot is blocked. And it bounces back to center ice. Jim Pack shoots it in. Good job by the Arrows to keep the pressure. They don't want to go into a defensive shell, and they're not. They keep forechecking, and they keep dumping it in. Across the line, it's Shargarodsky trying to slice through the defense. Laniel's got him stride for stride. Arrows trying to move it along. Malgunas can't, or make it Freer, rather, that couldn't clear. Held in by Tierney. It came out in front. Battle for the puck, and Freer cleared it to Conroy. Here come the Arrows. Al Conroy just pulls up, brings it across the line. He'll dump it in. Arneal goes in after it. Hard to the puck into the corner. Arneal looking for the pass. He's pushed in there by Brad Shaw. They're skate to skate in the corner. They continue to work it out in the scrum. It's picked loose, and Steve Junker clears it to center ice. And hit the linesman, and the Arrows regroup Malamon. We've seen limited ice tonight, but... He has been uh, kind of a nice addition for the Arrows in this sense that he can give the five other defensemen a, a breather. And of course, with a couple injuries that they've seen uh, with uh, Grant out uh, for about a few more days and, and of course, Gord Krupke and who knows, potential other injuries. So it is a good addition. At center, the Vipers have it. Tierney rolled it into the arrow end. It came out in front and it's picked up by Miles O'Connor. Worked the pass to Malguna, snapped it out at center and the Vipers are back. Joe Day in his own zone, forechecked by Yo to the left side. It's controlled by Michael Stewart, galloping into the arrow end. Dobson out. Did he slow it? Yes. In fact, he's corralled it, and Miles O'Connor will play it. 7 20 to go in the third, a 4 1 hockey game. Arrows lead it. Stewart, forecheck Di Pietro, hands it back to Dave Williams out at center, and here comes Darrell Williams across the line. Who drives? Stop Dobson, rebound in front. Dobson makes the save. That's maybe the first time we've seen all night where Dobson kind of struggled with a rebound, and we'll talk about that when we return. 7-0-4 in the third to play. 4-1 Houston. Be back. Along with Mike Greenley, Alan Hemberger, Adam Gordon with you, and Alan, we talked before going to the break about Rob Dobson. This might have been the one time he had a little trouble with it. Yeah, that's uh, one of the, you know, the goaltender's problems is giving up uh, rebounds, and he gave up a big one that time, but fortunately, it came right back at him. I'm wondering if that was when he tried to control, though. It looked like he had control of well, it. Well, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes a, a shot from the point like that, you want to kick to the corner. I think it just hit the inside of his foot instead of the outside of his foot. He just didn't get his foot rolled over enough on that one. Still a good save, and it, it was a smart play for him to just grab the puck the way he did, control it. Donnelly chipped it off the boards. It came out at center. Shagaronsky rolled it into the Houston zone. Jim Pack will hustle back to play it. Pack in behind the net. He's crushed by Darrell Williams, but Donnelly romps the center as Pack.
fast miss DiPietro and the Vipers turn it around. Vipers putting a little pressure on as Williams a shot just hooked wide. Rebound came out to Joe Day. 6.40 to go. Still plenty of time for Detroit. Puck came out in front and the arrows have it. Donnelly center ice for DiPietro. Roll one right side. Slivchenko across the line. Slivy trying to make the move. He went around his old teammate. Shakarovsky stops shot. Wow. Knickle got over there. But what a play by Vadim Slivchenko. Wow. Showing his fellow countryman Oleg Shagaransky, this is how you carry the puck. And you know what? Slivchenko practices this move. Watch how he touches it in between his skates. Or he already did it. And then he comes around. He almost beats Knickle to the post. But uh, right before that, he comes around the net. But right before that, he knocked it into his skates, kicks it back to his stick. And you know what? You know what happened there is the defenseman starts looking at the puck at that point, and he just goes right around him. Boy, Knickle, I think, got there in the knick of time. <laughs> Ouch. Face off to the right side of Rick Knickle. And it's a good thing to see the arrows keep that pressure on. Face off right of Knickle, controlled by the Vipers. Herbers jammed it off the boards. It'll go to center. Icing indicated, but Loach will be the first one there, meaning Dobson will play it. Over to O'Connor, cleared not out. Dave Williams centered it with hit skates. Laniel steered it ahead for rear. Rolled one to the right side for Graham Townsend. And he hands it right back to Laniel across the line. Laniel shoots it in. Laniel centered in front for couldn't get gathered in, then took a baseball swat at it, and he missed it partially. Townsend to the line, Laniel got it behind the net. Freer, who had Knickle all oh. over him. Wow, how did that take place? And the Vipers turn it around. Gila rose to center, through the neutral zone, across the line, and O'Connor poke check it, and the arrows turn it around. Scott O'Neill with a pair of tallies, dumps the puck into the Detroit zone, and Shargarovsky goes back to play it. 4-1, the arrows lead at five and a half to go. Shagarovsky, left side, Michael Stewart. Four check by Yo. Stewart through the neutral zone, hits the line, long shot, Thompson stopped it. Oh, made things a little interesting there. Well, I'll tell you what happened there is, I think the puck actually had a bounce before it hit the, uh, hit, hit Dobson's pads. And those are always tough, because they're, they're probably, the puck was probably on edge. And you can't really see it in there, but as it came up, I think Dobson again trying to clear the puck to the corner may have played it beforehand. A little overplaying maybe, and uh, he does freeze it in time though. The arrows really clamp it down defensively right now because this is what they have to do. They've got enough goals to win the game. They just don't want to give uh, the, the Vipers another chance. They, they have given them chances from the perimeter, which is nice. They've limited the, the true scoring chances, which I think uh, Dobson is very thankful for. Puck to the near side. It's cleared out at center and into the Viper zone. David Emma back to play it. Worked it off the boards to center. And Balamont hooked it into the Detroit end. Out of the net, Knickle slows, and he'll play it along the boards. Junker trying to clear Knott. McCrory's on his case and went back behind the net. And it's controlled by the Vipers. Oleg Shagorodsky. Tip pass ahead. Junker trying to find Emma. Junker went back to the red line to play it. Rink wide pass for Stewart. Hits the arrow line. Wine shoots. Missed it badly near side. Yosef Cherney's there. He centered it right to Mike Yo. And Yo will work a pass to center for Steve Jakes. Across the line. Jakes shoots. And a glove save made by Knickel. Reversed it along the boards for Michael Stewart. Stewart meandering through his own end, Miss Daryl Williams, and Jim Pack goes back with four and a half to play. And a 4-1 hockey game, and Vipers trailing. Andrew Jack to center. DiPietro scooped it away, a long pass for Slivchenko. Had to go back and regain his faculties on it, and then the puck taken back by Detroit. It came to Daryl Williams, back to the line for Joe Day. Moving down the left side, center in skates. Here's Andrew Jack. Turning, wheeling, waiting, couldn't get the shot away. And Druzak, watched by DiPietro, back to the line for Williams. Dave Williams jammed it down along the boards. It went behind the net for Daryl Williams. Centered! It came back along. It was in front, and it hit the skates, and Turjan's got it. Sylvain Turjan busting down the left side, and he's knocked off the puck by Andruzak. Good play by Greg Andruzak. Nice defensive play, and the Vipers turn it around. It shot into the arrow territory. It came out in front, and the arrows turn it around. La Arneal hoists it high in the air. That'll score the runner from third, but the arrows bring it ahead. Freer dropped it. Laniel cutting right in. Laniel centered, stopped by Knickel, and it shot down the ice. Icing indicated as the arrows go back to touch. And with three minutes and 16 seconds to go, it's 4 1 the arrows, and we take time out. We'll be right back after this.
Arrows lead at 4-1 in the third period, 3.15 to go. And let's take a look at tonight's Gatorade play of the game. And Slivchenko looking for goal number five, but it's this guy, Paul DiPietro, doing the job, Greener, all night long. And he rings it off the post just for good measure. Made sure it got in there. And a good job by Slivchenko, his fifth point in fifth game, in his five last games. Boy, Dobson has been hot. The last 109 shots at him, he stopped 102 of them. Not bad. That's hot. That even raises the eyebrows of Mike Greenlee, a former goaltender himself. In fact, Greener just kind of sitting back as a fan going, yes, I love it. It's, it was funny in the interview, Greener, as you look at Rob Dobson, it was kind of funny in the interview on the UPN game the other night. We asked Dobber, and he was saying, as you know, as part of the union, Greener, now how do you get to be a member of this union? And I'm not sure if I want to be a member of that union there. I think it has to do with stitches in the face. No, actually, no. no. I, that's old time goaltending. <laughs> <laughs> we wear these nice masks that you see, and pucks don't usually get through there. But it's funny because Dauber did, uh, the shots are so hard these days, a shot did get through Dauber's mask a few years ago. He was lucky on that one. And Puzak a shot in the right pad save made by Rob Dobson. I think he's earned himself another start Sunday. I believe so. It'd be silly not to. No, no doubt about it. Lady you lose. Now uh -oh. the puck jammed away. Conroy's got a chance. Right side. Wine shoots upstairs and a great glove save made by Rick Knickle. Two former teammates. You think Knickle didn't know a little bit about Conroy, but in retrospect, Conroy didn't know a little bit about Rick Knickle. Well, he went upstairs, but actually it's funny because a lot of times, uh, a lot of times you'll fake upstairs and go go low five hole or low uh, stick side somewhere. But actually that puck was labeled good save. You know, Mike, the shot that you rarely see these days is the backhand. Do goaltenders look, do goalies not look for the backhand as much as they used to? Do they kind of expect that their shot, that the player isn't going to take the backhand shot? On a breakaway, uh, it's not It's not hard to, uh, it, it's hard to expect it because it's such a quick move, but on a big booming slap shot like that, you know he can't go to the backhand because it's not going to be coming very fast. No, not for the blue line. Mike is controlled by Knickel. And it's Michael Stewart. Chipped in the line and out at center. Valamon rolled it in behind the net and Knickel slows. And the Vipers have got it. Michael Stewart meandering up and out of the zone. Picked away McCrory, but the Vipers corral it. Dave Williams into the arrow end and Dobson comes out to poke it. Far corner Junker reversed it down low and here's Carl Valamon who will rip it along the boards and it'll go to center. 2.05 to go in the third in a 4-1 game. This has been such a good game, Alan. I think we're going to charge you admission for this one anyway. Well, that's all right. Uh, I'll pay the price as long as the arrows come up with a win. There you go. We've really enjoyed having you on tonight. Jakes, give it over to Graham Townsend at center. He'll shoot it into the Detroit zone. We're down to 145. Arrows lead at 4-1. Bradshaw in his own zone. Long lead pass tipped away. Donnelly trying to get it. Couldn't. Donnelly had to take another swing at it. Couldn't get it. Then he and Williams go along the boards. Puck picked up by DiPietro and cleared to center ice. And whistle stops play and a face off brought to center on the offsides call. And Paul DiPietro, welcome to Houston, Texas. It is absolutely fantastic to have a guy like this around. He really picked up this team. Uh, he and, uh, and Turgeon in the, in the first period when they put their first shift on the ice, you could see that these two guys were going to get the legs moving. They were going to set the pace of the game, and things started happening for the Arrows after that. We can't say enough about Ron Dobson, though. He's the guy who's kept him in the game. Puck controlled by Detroit, and it goes into the Arrow zone. Jim Pack up for Townsend, chipped at the center. The Dauber has made his mark. Now a three on two the other way. Townsend a pass for DiPietro too far. And the Euros are back. Turgeon for Townsend. Gives it in front for DiPietro. Cuts back. Lost an edge. Crashed and burned in the slot. And the Vipers reverse it. But not out. Held in by Gord Donnelly. His shot is deflected. And Shagorodsky clears. Here come the Vipers left to right. Oleg Shagorodsky pass to the right side for Joe Day. Sends it back. Dave Smith down low. The shot. Dobson stopped that. Puck in front. And Williams trying to lop one in front. That was stopped before it got to Dobson. Townsend finally chipped it out at center. Hey, what's this? Someone just threw a kitchen sink and Dobson stopped that as well. That's the way it's been tonight. Now it's back down into the Viper zone. He has found himself a little bald spot on the top of his head from standing on it all night. And that goes back to the Indy game as well. 
Arrows 30 seconds away from win number two and the crowd starting to make some noise. Out of the net, Dobson trying to play it. This crowd applauding the efforts of the boys tonight. In front, the puck came down low. It was centered, blocked, it was lodged in there and Dobson covers up with 17 seconds to go and there's no finer feeling Mike Greenlee when you see this from the crowd. Well, it certainly is and you have to realize this is the first home win. The last win obviously was on the road so the uh, the arrows showing them fans that they mean business this year as they come into this building tonight and are able to put up a score like four to one against a team that that you know is is one of the tops in the league as you said first in the central and you know mike it could have been very easily four to one in favor of the vipers after about five minutes of the first period well actually yes it could have been uh, dobson having trouble on the first goal but after that he's been dead dead solid perfect as he's stopped breakaways and all kinds of shots off the face off Clock controlled by O'Connor, takes his man into the corner. McCrory snapped it up the boards and down the ice it'll go. Icing is indicated, five seconds left and Knickel, will he play it? No, we will get an icing call on the arrows with exactly two seconds left and we'll face it off one more time. 4-1, the arrows are gonna win this hockey game and a lot because of that guy, Rob Dobson. And that's two now he's put together. And it's going to be good just to team wise the, the way the teams play tonight uh, obviously Dobson playing well but the team playing excellent as well and it's going to be good because they're going into a game against Atlanta who have oh, I'm not sure how they're doing tonight they were losing in the first period to Orlando two to nothing but before that it, I think won four in a row so Atlanta also a very strong team and this this gives them a good boost going against Atlanta who have a very strong team. Face off to the right of Dobson. Knickel has come to the bench for an extra attacker. Can they score three goals in two seconds? I don't know if they want three, but I think they 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 wouldn't mind one. Well, you know, this is a good practice. Maybe you know, maybe we can turn up a play that they well, there's uh, might, a shot might be able to use. You know. All right, shot wide. Dobson win. Arrows win. They're now two and six. Vipers go to six and two. Four one. The Arrows win it. And Alan Greener and myself will be back to talk about this victory when we return. We'll be right back. get their second win of the year by defeating the Detroit Vipers tonight 4-1 and it's time for tonight's tactical star of the game pick him I mean really pick him but we got to go with Rob Dobson gets his number for saves tonight 31 and uh, he has been on fire and he is tonight's Texaco star of the game back-to-back -back wins and well, I'm sure he'll be the man in goal for the Arrows come Sunday against the Atlanta Knights. But, uh, you know, he really made the saves when they counted. Like you said, that first period really belonged to the Detroit Vipers in the first five minutes. There's no question that the Arrows seemed to be out of sync in that first five minutes. They didn't seem to be playing together. They weren't sure who was covering what position. The points were left open any number of times. We had two-on-one -on -one rushes. But after five minutes, they seemed to click. Terry's told them something, obviously, Mike, and got him going. Well, I tell you what, I only see positive signs for the Arrows in the future. You have two very solid lines, and you have a very good, hard-working third line, and you, have, and you have a couple other players in and around that, too, and you have a strong defense and goaltending like this. I say, I, all I see is good things for the future. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and still, I, don't be surprised if there's a tweak here and there, but you know what? At this point, I, I couldn't see it, especially when you get these injured guys, Krumpke and Kevin Grant, back in the lineup. It's time for tonight's final statistics. They're brought to you by your local Texas Dodge dealer. Final shots on goal, 32-27 in favor of the Vipers. Vipers go 0 for 4 on the power play. Greener, I want to get a quick comment in a minute here on that 0 for 7 on the power play. Seven shots in the power play for Detroit, only four for the Houston Arrows. Eight penalties for 19 minutes for Detroit. Five penalties for 13 minutes for the Houston Arrows. But that 0 for 7, Mike Greenlee, I, I, that's got to be a huge concern because that's what a lot of times late in the season and in the uh, playoffs where games are won and lost. And that's right. Uh, I think... First of all, the penalty kill, it, they shored that up by uh, being very successful lately in that. Now they have to work on that power play. And I think once you get the, you saw how well these players play together, uh, five on five. So you get some of these guys lined up together in the power play. You get them in practice working together. I think they'll be very successful eventually. But they played together tonight like they've been playing together all year. And of course, you know, a week ago tonight, these guys didn't have any confidence. They hadn't won a game. Well, now they've won two in a row, and they're going against Atlanta next. Or is that right? That's right. And Sunday. Atlanta's another tough, tough uh, team to to beat on their home ice. Gentlemen, thank you. Alan, thank Adam, you so much. Adam, I had a great time. I, I really and Mike, thanks very much for your help. I enjoyed it. Oh, I had a great no time. problem at all. A lot of fun in there. There's always an open invitation for you thank here, you. and we look forward to having you. Thanks thank you so much. much. Thank you, Greener, and thanks for everybody for making this a wonderful broadcast. Arrows next telecast.
will be this Sunday at 6 o'clock as the Arrows host the 94 Turner Cup champion and Mike Greenlee's former team, the Atlanta Knights. You know Green will be fired up for that one. Once again, tonight's final score, Houston Arrows 4, Detroit Vipers 1. For Mike Greenlee and Alan Hamburger, this is Adam Gordon saying good night from the Summit.